It's Mr. Paul Smith. Hi, yeah. It's nice to meet you, mate. Hello, mate. Nice it's one of those. You. Why comedy? Why? How did you get into this world? Like, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've been asked a million times, but we let's tread over some old ground. Does this new club started hot water? He said, book yourself in. It was only like a Sunday night open mic. Book yourself in. Go and do your set. But no one thought, because social media wasn't like... No one thought you can just film yourself and put yourself out there. No one was doing it. Were it you that did it or were it the no, club? No, I told them not to do it. Oh, really? Is there a hard part about it? But even when you smash it, that high is so high that you've got to then come down from there somewhere. The two shows in Newcastle, two, like two and a half thousand people in each one, stand innovation at the end of it. It was incredible. Come home and I was just sat in my house and I was like, never felt more depressed in my life. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Was it the highs and lows of, I guess, performance and the success that led you to then go into the world of psychedelics? DMT definitely was the most life-changing experience I've ever had. I got carried through a rainbow by a giant serpent and it was just telling me I was doing everything okay. I said, just keep it, making people laugh. False fighting. <laughs> How <laughs> the hell did that, did that happen, mate? The idea of actually getting in and fighting does terrify me. Um, so I thought if I can do it then at least it shows anyone can do it. And also just the experience of training. It's been really good for me mentally. There's this guy that I know, Beard Meets Food, and on camera, <laughs> he's like the nicest guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then in real life, he's such a prick. <laughs> Who's the equivalent of Adam in comedy? Notoriously, and I don't know this, this is conjecture, so I'm going to distance myself from it, but apparently <laughs> he's a Oh, I could have told you that. Adam. And I'm Josh. And welcome back to the Breaking Bread Podcast, which is described by one of our American listeners week in, week out as the two Brits trying to be funny podcast. I think he's got us bang to rights there. But this week, we've got somebody who's actually a professional comedian. Uh, and I'm, I'm quite excited because this is probably the first guest we've had on that people might actually recognise. It's Mr. <laughs> Paul Smith. Hi, uh, it's nice to meet you, mate. Hello, mate. Nice it's one of those. Too. How's it going? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. I'm, I'm trying not to fanboy too much as a, I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, I feel bad now. I should really say by uh, uh, by reply that I'm a big fan of yours, but like I, my sister's a big fan. <laughs> I, I just don't watch that much stand-up co comedy, but um, I've seen a couple of clips. I would say I'm, I'm now a fan, so thank you very That's much. Okay. Uh, we, we got to sideline you for two seconds because every week um, I've got to ask Josh how his week's been, um, even though we don't really care. <laughs> you so can, like, how's your week been, mate? You could have been that this week. I'm, I'm, I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. All the better for having Paul here. Nah. Adam jokes, right? He's, he says... We need to try and get guests on that's just like not our mates or family. But you do actually fall into the category because we've spent a bit of time together, haven't yeah, we? We've, so we've we're actually mates. Now, we? <laughs> yeah, like, so I think we should have just hidden that and Sorry. then people would have thought it was like some exclusive grab. Like, oh, yeah. Well, before we get into the, into the nitty gritty with Paul, we'll start, as we do always, with a YouTube comment. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. So we've got three comments today. First from Gregor Siwek. I think Greg was in before, before because I, I remember saying he sounds hard as nails. Don't yeah, you think? Yeah, he, does, yeah. so. he sounds yeah. like he'd be, he could be fighting with uh, your octagon boys. He does. I, I wouldn't <laughs> fight Greg. <Gregor, like. laughs> so Gregor says, listening to Breaking Bread podcast, drinking dark and hairy from Breaking Beans mug. I think this will be a tradition on every Tuesday from now on. Very entertaining chaps. Thanks for the content, Josh Adam and, and George. I think well, you should have picked a, a negative one. We've got Sometimes a few more. We, we, might have one. <laughs> we, we, we get a load of those, so like we take a break from time to time for an Because that guy that you referenced at the beginning was like two British trying to be funny. Yeah. He basically hammers us. I don't, I don't know why he watches, bless him, uh, but he hammers us every week saying we're not funny and we need to change it up. And then everybody in the comments fucking leathers him. So it's like just carnage. Like we read every, we don't reply to any, but we read everything. And I'm like, mate, just don't comment. Like he's done it every single week. He just I, gets leathered. I thought it was like, uh, you know, he wasn't trying to be mean. But like it was like a you know uh, backhanded was, compliments. Yeah, yeah, like a it's trying to be constructive. Yeah, I, that maybe it is, but I don't know. <laughs> I've not seen enough of them. But uh, anyway, what's the next one, George? Okay, so Laura Melt says, okay, off topic, but I have been wondering for a while now, and it just seems right to ask here: Does Adam straighten his hair? It always looks way too straight in food bits. <laughs> somebody, you know, somebody, you remember somebody asked me that at the podcast? I don't straighten it. Actually, I've been thinking lately about don't laugh about getting a perm. Is that, <laughs> is that something that men, dudes can do? Is that is yeah. that? Because like in the seventies, that was a big thing, right? Yeah, Kevin Keegan and all that. Not like a tight perm, but yeah, I mean, like, I mean you got a scouse it, yeah. So that, that was the home of the perm. Yeah, right. Yeah, you should do it, man. Get a top hat, you black slash. I don't think you should do it. I'm gonna no? vote and say no. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna vote for no. All right, okay. I, well, I think I'm, you should no. straighten your beard, though. Just to oh match no, hair. straight beards look <laughs> awful. I can't think of anything worse. It looks so bad. But no, I, uh, was it was her name Laura? Laura. I don't straighten it. I'm just I'm blessed with very very straight hair. Um, I was blessed or cursed. I don't. I, it's hard when you have long hair. You can't really do anything with it. You just look 
um, dishevelled all the time. But um, no, it's not, it's not naturally straight, but thanks for asking. And the final comment is from Gene Longston. This is from the fitness and motivation episode. Motivated. Um, <laughs> saying Adam's resistance training is saying no to Lindsay in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doesn't take a lot of hard work. <laughs> week in, week out, all we hear is that... Um, Mrs. Beard is quite feisty in the bedroom, whereas Adam's quite, um, well, quite tame. She's, she's got, well, no, it's not that, it's more that she has like a, a voracious appetite, right? She, the, it's a thirst <laughs> which cannot be quenched by one man alone, right? So, and I've, I've got quite a low sex drive and quite, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting on now, I'm 37, so, you know, the, the natural tease on the down, um, so much so that, did I, tell you, did I, did I uh, tell you she bought me some of those Blue Zeus pills as a joke for my birthday? No, for her birthday, she bought well, yeah, Oh, yeah, for her birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So, so she's, yeah, she, yeah, she bought herself some blues you see how many at once? I did. Well, they were, they, were, they were those bullshit ones, you know, you get from like a toilet in a, oh, in a yeah. club, so they've just got a bit of taurine in them, so it makes your face itch. But one, of his, one of his go-to lines is when he talks about Lindsay's armory of uh, of sex toys in the bedroom, which actually reminded me of some of your work. <laughs> it's like when you open, you know, like on Legend of Zelda, you open the golden chest and it goes like, ah! <laughs> like seven dildos in it for different occasions. <laughs> it's different right. occasions. She, she doesn't. Which she doesn't watch. Today? She doesn't watch or listen. So uh, I can get away with that joke she's week too on busy, week. Sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching Bob Ross as she's going to town in another room. <laughs> I wonder what that's. I thought she was doing some DIY up there. Maybe it's not a drill. I don't know. <laughs> that's what you read on the cherry picker the other day. <laughs> ah, love it. Well, thanks for the comments as always, guys. Like, we'll jump straight, jump straight in with Pop, mate. You're on the uh, you're on the Joker tour, like, and I only. Yeah. It's only been going now since last year, and it started it's going through- in September, um, and then it kind of ran through October, November, a little bit into November, and then we had a little break, and then it's been full on for January. I think we're about God, forty shows in now, and and you, you've got shows pretty much sold out until November this year. Yeah, Is that right? One hundred and fifty left. Yeah, it's big. It's how many? Tough. How many left? About one hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty shows. Mm. Fucking hell, <laughs> that's a lot of shows, isn't it? Yeah. It's Good unbelievable. Lord. Like, why comedy? Why, how did you get into this world? Like, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you've been asked a million times, but we, let's tread over some old ground for those that may not know. No, but, no one's ever asked that before. Really? <laughs> no. <I'm laughs> <not>. Cut <laughs> that, George. <laughs> Fuck's sake, Paul. Fuck with me. <laughs> um, why did I start doing comedy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was about, I was like 23. Do you know what I started? I was doing loads of like self-help books, Paul McKenna. I was dead shy. I'm quite, you know me, I'm quite, know, yeah. people get really disappointed in me because I'm quite quiet. <laughs> like, and people think I'm going to be like full on. I, 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 I'll just be buying shopping and Tesco and people are like, don't take the piss out of me. I'm like, what the fuck do you think? Well, he, he said the same <laughs> thing. It's like, it, it's like his Paul... G- is that the fucking cherry picker? <laughs> I, just, I, was, I was just going to keep talking, boys. Keep talking. Oh, you know. These mics are quite good, though. So yeah, you probably, they are good. You probably yeah. can't hear it. Yeah. But yeah, we were like, when we were coming in today, he said, is Paul going to like leather is a bit when he, when he sits down? I went, no. I'm like, he's really like just quite timid. You know, like yeah. I said, like, he's, a, he's, a, he's a performer. Like that's his performance. And like when he's on stage, he does it. Because when... Because you were saying when we had a shit comic in, comic in Brian Lacey. Yeah, the first thing he did was leather, Brian. You have to do that when you say comic and Brian Lacey. Clip that, George, clip it. Yeah, so I just, it was what I, 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 I booked on to do this stand up comedy course because um, I used to go and watch all the time. Yeah. It was like a four week comedy course, which you, I mean, it's ridiculous teaching a stand up comedy course. You can't really do it, but it's just like little stupid things like take the mic out of the stand and that. Um, but it gives you a little place to go and be safe and feel like you, you kind of get encouragement to get up and do it. And I thought, I'll do this once. If I can do that, then I'll be able to do anything. Kind of like a skydive for me, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Then I got, for some reason, when I got on stage, I'm more comfortable than I am anywhere else. So just, I, I, that's why I, I feel like in that, I, I'm more confrontational. Like I've fronted people out on stage that I would never do. <laughs> I would never say anything to in real life. There's big, massive guys. And I'm like, well, I'll smack you then. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, if we were six foot over there, I'd be like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> At least you've got a bit of skills to back it up. This dickhead seems to get to a fight every time he goes on any trip or journey. It's not, well, gone- it's not, no, that's not my fault. That's, I'm just a man of principle. But um, it's, I, you, said, you, said you did a comedy like course. Yeah. Was that like a? I don't know what the, Is that what, more what, of a workshop? It's like two hours a week. You go and to, there was two comedians. You go and you have to you have to write like seven minutes of material so you go and you try your stuff it was really it was harder than the gig because it'd be in a room like smaller than this and it'd be like everyone else on the course and the two people the two people teaching the course and you'd have to get up and say your stuff being in a room that's really small 
A small yeah. crowd's always harder than a big crowd. Yeah. And you get up and you say it, and then but then the next week you've got to go back and say it again. So everyone, no one's going to laugh at that point. Uh, then you just lose all confidence. Yeah. I, feel, I, I don't write any stuff down now because I feel like if you do, if I ever write anything down and go back and read it, I'll, I'll just convince myself it's shit. Yeah. That's just, yeah. That blew my, when you told me that when we were flying back from Prague, that you do, there's nothing's written down. It's just all. So it's all kind of committed to memory. So you have bits, I guess, that are just yeah, yeah, up yeah. there, but you don't, there's yeah. no like. People think that's dead art. I don't know why people don't, people think that's like really difficult to do. I think, I mean, I think cause sometimes like a lot of, a lot of jokes are kind of quite, they're not just a, a, a one line or other. They might, sometimes no, it's like, like stories. A, yeah, so yeah. my show now is literally two stories, two big stories that last like 70 minutes. Yeah. So but that is, that's kind of like. There's loads of jokes in there. Probably. Yeah. The, but there's one kind of large punch on there. I suppose yeah. that is kind of, it's like being an actor though, isn't it? You've got to commit like yeah. lines to memory. So I suppose if it's your job, I, that is, I mean, I would. That's got to be harder because you've got to literally say exactly. Right. Yeah, whereas like you know which direction you're yeah. going in. Have you, have you, have you never? It's the way, if you just learn the way your brain works, like if you try and write stuff down, your brain your brain doesn't work in verbal language really. It's a, it's a it's foreign. Yeah. So that you lose all the emotion. You if you think about how you think, you don't think in words. You think in colors and smells and sights and all that kind of stuff. So like that's why when you write stuff down, it just takes everything away from it. So if you just everybody does it anyway. Like yeah, you, yeah. you you tell stories about yourself. I was trying to explain it like this, like if you go on a date or to a meeting and you meet new people, you have small talk stories about yourself yeah. that paint you in a certain light and then you've exaggerated those stories. You know you have, but to the point now where the exaggerated version of the story is more real to you than the real, you can't really remember the real version. You've told the fake version so many times. It just adds and embellishes and embellishes. And it's just that. It's just, it's just to the end of being funny rather than to the end of making you look good or making yeah, yeah. you... Better, look like you're better at your job than you are, however. So when you told me that story about choking that dude out in Dublin, did you actually choke him out or did you say Dublin? Sorry? Yeah, wherever it was. Well, my friend choked somebody out in Manchester. Oh, it's your friend now? Because yeah. you told me it was you. <laughs> yeah, so that's, you, yeah. he's got a point there, all right. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happened, mate, of course it did. Um, so like, so you do this comedy course, then what, so you've done, what, seven weeks, did you say? Four weeks no, comedy? Four weeks. Four weeks. And then you just watch it. So you have to go to a local club and then... No, I was at a theatre called The Royal Coast, like 300 people. And it was all friends and family and stuff, really supportive. Ah, oh, wow. Nice. A bit like when we did the live podcast, that was like 10% friends and family. So yeah, we took up the first two rows. 10% friend. drunk friends That's and family. That's the worst thing you can do. You know, I, I agree. Make, I always make people... Like, the first time I did an arena show, so I did the, the arena in Liverpool, 9,500 people. And I got there and it was like, they cordoned the first two rows off. And I was like, why? Have... And he went, oh yeah, that's for your comp seat. And I was like, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I want to do is look at my mum while I'm saying this shit. Yeah. Like, so I had to get them to move them. Cause I was, and they were like, oh, that's just because it's what bands would do. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and I was like, no, I don't want it anywhere near me. I don't want to be able to see anyone that I know. Cause I'll just, my head will fall off. It was awful on our live yeah. show. It was so hard. <laughs> I've got like a new respect for, for stand up comedy for people that can like talk to a crowd. It was so yeah. difficult. <laughs> Like it were way well, harder we, we than weren't I even t- we, weren't, we, we weren't telling jokes, right? We're just up there like presenting stuff. I yeah. think. Well, you were mostly presenting. I didn't really. It's harder though. I don't you know because the, the thing is, you feel that tension, and then uh, if if people, it, it's all like a kind of perception. So if people come into my show, the framing of it is that they go, "Okay, I'm at a comedy show." Now I'm at the blessed part where they, they already know who I am and they already, they already think I'm funny after battles won. But even when you're in a comedy club, you can't. I'm going to a comedy club. The fact that you're getting on that stage to them makes them think he must be funny. You've already like, yeah. so you then you really just got to prove them wrong that you're not funny, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but in your situation, when, when you just, I think I've been in situations where you're doing public, it's happened now, doing doing like public speaking or stuff. And that, that weird tension is so much more difficult to deal with. Oh, it was fucking painful. Every it picture was, though, from the live show, you can see this vein just like <laughs> pulsating out my head. And my blood pressure must have been, fr- like I was so fucking stressed. I was you like- were a bit red. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> Cause uh, we were in a cinema as well, right? So we were at every man's cinema. And uh, I, I didn't consider the acoustics of the yeah, environment. The worst it was just yeah. dead. Like, yeah. so obviously it just absorbed sound. So we, like, we, all we could hear were the, 
but my sister and your sister cheering it first row. Yeah, they, they, and then there's 150 other people just like, <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yeah, luckily they were both bad. So like they were just, you know, hooping and hollering. So there was some sound, but uh, how, it must be difficult. So how long ago was this this course then? Because I mean, yeah. like, I've heard the old saying- 17 years ago. It took you 15 years, it took, takes you 15 years to be an overnight success. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, how long ago, 17? 17 years ago. Wow. Then, so yeah, so Evan, my, Evan kind of started taking off in 2018. So I've been doing it for, what, 12 years at that point. How, the, how old are you now, mate? Sorry. 40. You look good for 40. I've just seen his rig as well. He just, he's put the, the little beard has bullish shirt on that everyone nicked from the live, uh, the live uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah looking stage, well for 40. Who was going to wear it on stage tonight? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, well, yeah, that's a long time, isn't it? To, for it to kind of so how did, the, how did the career pan out then? Because obviously it's, if it'll have been 15 years to get to 2018-ish. Yeah. Bad maths, that's not, is it? It's 12 years. 12, um, yeah. Was there ever a point where you wanted to like give up? Was there a point where you, give think up. you did I gave give up? up in 2009 for a year. I did. I got on TV in 2007, so like a year after I started. I got followed by the BBC, like for four weeks, and they were like, it was again. There was a big comedy chain called Junglers, and they were following me and this old guy around, um, to see if it was like harder for a young actor, or an old like old school comedian to get like make it in comedy now, and they had to do these challenges. It was off. I had to do a full set of it, like do me set to this guy called Ricky Grover was the comedy. He used to play a, a, a character called Buller on Channel 4. Right. Big, massive ex-heavyweight boxer Greek guy. Very funny comedian. But I, I lived in a little council house in Liverpool. I had, to, I had a full BBC film crew. And him sat on my couch and I had to do my set to him in my living room. It was fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I still have nightmares about that. Um, <clears throat> but we had to do... Um, yeah, so I got on, I got on that, and then it just I, I, in my head I was like, "This is it. This yeah. is me. This is me thing." Because everything had gone right to that point, and then it, it just, that just didn't go the way I thought it was gonna go, um, and I lost that, and I was like, "Fuck!" And then my head just fell off, and then I was getting gigs off the back of it, but I just wasn't ready for, and I was putting myself in for them because I was like, "Yeah, I can do them," and I just couldn't, and then it just it kind of all fell apart, and I thought, oh, "I can't do this anymore," and I quit. And it's just the traveling around and stuff as well, like you know yourself when you're traveling around on your own. It can get to you. It's very difficult. Like just living in hotels and stuff like that. It's really hard to keep yourself sane. Yeah. So I was just, I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I stopped. Trick to that is being uh, completely insane from the start. That's how I do it. But, uh, <laughs> no, I know what you mean that because it's, it's definitely a lonely life. It isn't is. It? Yeah. And even though it seems like it's something that's fun to do, like people say to me all the time about, you know, eating, oh, I must be as going around eating. And yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for it. But there are times when you think, fucking hell, I miss my family, you know, yeah, I miss yeah. my, especially when you're away a lot. So if you're, if you're a comedian, you're literally on these like, super long tours all the time yeah then it must be must be difficult i get that yeah and it's like, especially back in them days like it was just there was no money like i wasn't getting paid very much so I'm like i'm on national express buses going around in the middle of the night and stuff it was just it was hard so i stopped um and then i i uh i was just just pottering around and i was still tell, telling people i was a comedian because what else are you going to tell people and yeah. then i bumped into a mate of mine who does me tour sport now phil um after about a year and he was like where the, where the fuck have you been and I was like, ah, and I, but I was with another guy from the gym. I'd come out of the gym and I, I was with this other guy and I was obviously told this guy I was a comedian because yeah. what else are you going to say? <laughs> uh, and he was like, where have you been? And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, why aren't you gigging anymore? And I was like, oh, I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, where? And I was just like, I've been about it. I just haven't bumped into you. And he was like, you haven't. He <laughs> <laughs> just called me straight yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, mate, you can't stop doing stand-up. I was like, I haven't stopped doing stand-up. He went, does this new club start at Hot Water? He said, book yourself in. This was only like a Sunday night open mic. Book yourself in, go and do your set. Um, so he made me get on and uh, ring them up and book in with them. And uh, so I did, and I thought, I'm going to cancel that as soon, as, <laughs> as soon as I leave. And then I just never, and then the sh the, it was like, it was in like three weeks like that. And I forgot about it. I was at a barbecue, I had a few cans, and it popped up with a reminder on my phone, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> the mate was like, come on, let's just go and do it. But I was half pissed. Yeah. So I got there. And when I got there, it was all like newer acts. And some of them recognized me, like, and remembered, like, I'd done the circus. So they were like, oh, he's good. So right. I went, all right, we'll put him on at the end. So I'm just getting more pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and then, so the, 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 the night it was fine. And this guy was, um, this guy was hosting. He was all right. He wasn't, he was a bit quiet. And I got on the stage and I used to start my set. I used to, I used to be really worried about people heckling me because I'd never really hosted. So I was always panicked about it. So I used to start the set with like, you used to think people are going to heckle me about being ginger. So I used to start, let's see if I can remember this. She used to start by going, uh, 
uh, and, uh, uh, people shout red head, ginger pubes, gingham, and ginger sauce, copper wire, copper bollocks, copper toes, sun dodge, <laughs> jar cell, rusty nuts, rusty bollocks, rusty lace, she's black, doesn't even make sense. <laughs> carrot, carrot top, oh lucky in it to having a bonfire, that was a good one. That really hurts from a six year old girl. Uh, <laughs> I, used to, I used to think I can get all them out of the way, but I started doing that and I couldn't remember it. So I went red uh, uh, and I thought, fuck, I fucked the single car. I can't remember my stuff. So I was like, I'm going to have to just mess with the crowd. So I just had to start messing with the crowd. <clears throat> And it went really well because no one had done it. Yeah. And the uh, owner was like, that was really funny. Um, do you want to do some hosting? So I was like, okay. So I went back a couple of weeks later, done a, done a, another bit of hosting for him. And then he was like, do you want to just do them all? So I ended up there every week. And I thought, so I'll just do this to keep me hand in. And then it went to Sunday and Friday, then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then every night. And then that club went mad and then he started filming it. So I was just at that club for like eight years. Just And everyone was like, you can't just be in one club. Just... You can't, you have to travel around as a comedian. And I was like, why? <laughs> this is working out. <clears throat> yeah. But no one thought, because social media wasn't like, no one thought you can just film yourself and put yourself out there. No one was doing it. So what, so obviously that crowd, you, you, you're you well known for your crowd work. The amount of people that I've spoken to recently, that have booked tickets to go see your tour and they've, they've seen you on TikTok or Instagram and they think that your show is the yeah. crowd work. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm saying to them, like, you've, no, like he's got a show. Don't like that's that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like he's got a he's got, this all he's, got, he's got a performance. <laughs> but you are so well known because of the crowd work and yeah. like how uh, what what sort of possess you to think right? This is this, this there's a, a bit of art for there's a, there's such an art form to this and like if we just stick it on social. Were it you that did it or were it the no, club? I told them not to do. It. Oh really? I was my like, man. <laughs> that's my kind of thing. That's what I do. Like, nah, don't pull that up. I know. I, well, I was like, well, no one's gonna watch that shit. Yeah. Like I was like, it's, it's just me fucking about. Like, but because what we did was, he, like, the, me, he, the two guys who own Hot Water, me two, like two of my best mates, Paul and Binzi, the brothers. And Paul's like the businessman. He loves marketing. He loves sitting, sits and watches graphs and stuff, and <laughs> turns them on. Um, he's very good at what he does. Um, he was like, we're gonna start filming and putting social media clips out, and I was like, no, no one's gonna and no no actor's gonna want to do it because you're burning all the material. No one's gonna want to do it. And he's like, they will. Do well. So he's like, we're just going to film one night a week. We're filming Monday night. We've got like 10 acts down to do short spots and we put clips out. And I was like, so at that time, we wanted it to look like live the Apollo, but we couldn't afford like loads of cameras. So we had one cam like one camera person in there. So while I was on stage, they were filming the crowds, you know, for cutaways. Yeah. So I like, I like to joke that all those early videos, all the laughter, everyone laughing is laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, I goes on and I was, so I'd, there was two sections of the show with five acts on each. So I'd do like 10 minutes of the start to warm them up. Then I'd go on, get an act on. And unless they absolutely died on their ass and I had to pull it back up, I'd just get the next act straight on. Cause there was so many acts on, I didn't want the crowd to get tired. Um, but the first video went, that went mad. Guy walks off, I walk on, and a guy from the middle of the front row gets up and walks out to go to the toilet. And I thought, well, I can't bring the next guy on because he's going to come back in the middle of his yeah. set. And I knew he was like kind of a one line of comedian. He was not going to deal with it very well. So I was like, I'm just going to have to wing this here. So I just spoke to this guy and he, I just asked him what he did. And he said, oh, I could jag you here. But his mate looked at him. He just gave him this little look. And I went, why has he just looked at you like you, <laughs> like, like you sell cocaine? <laughs> and his mate went, and I went, you fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and he all, all his mates up mad. And it's just, I, I was so, everyone's just screaming. I'm laughing my head off. Um, and that, that, that was like the first the video first that one. they got of me. And uh, I didn't think nothing of it. I've, I went away from my mum's 60th birthday the next week to Portugal, come back. And that video had gone viral. And I just, I, I, I come back, we landed. We needed bread and milk. I took the baby to Tesco and I walked around and there's these three, these three kids just looking at me and I was thinking, am I getting mugged in Tesco? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? This can't happen. So I'm, I'm, they're following me down, they're at the end of the aisles and they're like looking at me and I'm like, and the, I'm walking to the next aisle and they're like, go, and the people in the red man again, and I'm like, what's happening here? This is weird. And then some woman stopped me and went, you had know, the lad off that video, aren't you? And I was like, yeah, from the, she went from the comedy club. And I went, yeah, yeah. She went, oh, I love you. Uh, it's brilliant, that. She went, can I have a picture? So she got a picture, and then someone else got a picture, and someone else got a picture, and then these three lads come up. I knew it was you. Can we have a picture? And I was like, my head fell off a little bit because I was like, I didn't know how to deal with it. So it's just, I, I got the baby and left Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> you left a bit of milk behind. Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> that's amazing, that, isn't it? Like, to say that that's, that's the thing that's sort of like popped up. And every single, it seems like every clip that you put out now, 
just sets on fire on the internet like yeah it, we had some good ones i've got a, there's a guy who pretended to be deaf in my front row people still think he was deaf, <laughs> deaf. so I, I went and he just started going and i was like well, you're fucking not deaf are you <laughs> you, you can't go you're not deaf because it'll be some fucking like Zimbabwe and sign language that I don't know or something like that. I come off as a prick. So I was so all the way through the show, I'm like covering my mouth to see if he's still laughing and shit. Because he was pretending he was lip reading and that. Um but yeah, that like that that video went mad and it must have like I own my pint because it must have sold like must have sold me about forty thousand tickets or something. Wow. Crazy. Like, it's mad that though, isn't it? That's like the way that because I think com- comedy like especially if you can condense it into like little clips because like <laughs> Stuff like TikTok and Reels are how people yeah. consume stuff these days, lamentably. But um, I think comedy, stuff like that, where it's kind of a little bit confrontational, like if you, you know, if there's somebody heckling the crowd or yeah. whatnot, what I think that kind of, you know, that can get people interested because they, they, they like that little kind of bit of needle, yeah. you know, between people. So I get why it would be, um, I get why ca- comedians maybe wouldn't want it, but I get how it's such a big... I, I'm, uh, I'm a big, as Rudy films, you can't see Rudy's in the background. Sorry, I shouldn't. Have. <laughs> um, Rudy does all my filming, and we have like, we've had some like my shows are lovely. From but yeah, obviously you go to some places like we were in Blackpool last week, and there's a bit of a kick off. Do you know what I mean? Because it's Blackpool on a Saturday night, and there's two thousand eight hundred people. <laughs> <laughs> so in- inevitably, there's going to be some cocaine in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so forty five minutes into the show, and someone starts having a load of ideas that they need to share. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've had like. So, like Rudy had a video go back. We were at a play, we were at Redditch, a little town in the Midlands, and uh, a woman kicked off in the break. Like just, they was just, they were, they were just smashed, and they kicked off, and the sco- like the staff had to go over and get her out. We had to lock all the doors of the theatre because they were trying to kick the way back into the theatre till the police turned up. <laughs> so Rudy filmed it, and um, it went. He put it on as a reel, and it went mad. It was in the papers and stuff. Like, and I was like, we need to be careful of that because. People want to be in clips. Like there's some, not many people, but there's some yeah. psychopaths out there who will just do anything to be in a clip. So if you start getting too many heckle videos, people go, I'm going to heckle, heckle them to get yeah. in a video. And it just yeah. turns your whole, every show into a bear pit. So we have to be quite careful about that. Um, so the, like the deaf guy one was pretty good. Like he was just like, it wasn't really a heckle. He was answering me. Um, we've had a couple, like I had one with an, um, it was a, it was in Barrow. So I'm doing the show and it just started. It was, it was the, the, the week after it started training. So I'd done two jujitsu sessions. I had a black eye. <laughs> yeah. I, had to do, I, I had to make a joke about having a black eye because obviously it's noticeable. And it, I, you walk on it, you've got to mention it because everyone's going to be thinking, yeah, that's all well and good, but why the fuck have you got a black eye? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to talk. So I'm just opening the show by explaining my black eye. And uh, then it, it was like a pause. And this guy... He's, he's severely disabled, gets wheeled in, right? And the only place for him to be is the middle of the front row. There's like a disabled gap. So he gets wheeled in, but so slow, just so slowly. And the audience just went, and I'm looking at them and they're looking at me as if to go, you're going to have to say something. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you think I'm going to say? Like, like how much, how ruthless do you think I am? <laughs> so he gets going and he gets backed into his space. And I was like, you're right, me, you're right. And he went, I've been better. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely saved me life there. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some funny interactions with you on social media as well. I, I saw uh, a tweet, a Twitter exchange. Oh, wait, are you going to do the tweet? I was going to, I saw this the other day. Oh, maybe. maybe. All right, go uh, on. There might be different ones, but this is the woman from last week in Birmingham. This maybe. Had, this yeah. had me cracked up. It was um, somebody, uh, just at Paul Smith, it's crap. Yeah. He has only been on five minutes, then some bloke. Now it's finished. It's an interval. The full 75 minute show is in the second section. Did you not notice that nobody left the venue? <laughs> then she said, I'm on my way back. <laughs> Honestly, do you know what's terrible about that? Right. That happened. The same thing happened last year. So for this year, to start the show, I've been going right before the start, a little bit of admin. Um, and saying the story about the guy doing that last year, because the guy kicked off after the show saying, I've had these tickets for ages. You did about 20 minutes. Another guy came on. <laughs> And then the show ended and I went, you went home in the break. And he was like, well, that wasn't made clear. And I was like, did you not wonder why everyone else stayed? And he was like, I want my money back. And I go, well, is this clear? Suck me there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I start the show. And then that happened. And I was like, is she, f- that, that can't be real. <laughs> she literally just don't, she's just acted the joke out I've just said in real time. 
So I went back on stage, which has been nice as I've been able to use that instead. Of that is quality, <laughs> is that? Sorry, mate, I didn't realise. We were going to do the same one. Well, we should, yeah, we should probably should have like a well, cr- I just, cross I, notes there. I don't know. I, I just happened to, because I'll, I'll be honest, mate, I don't think I follow you on Twitter. I, I don't I, follow I don't, many people I, on Twitter. I, I don't go on Twitter. So no. I recommend don't follow me on Twitter. I never use it. <laughs> but I, I, I saw that on there. I, don't, I, I thought oh, that's perfect. But it's going to look to Josh like I've actually done some research before this week's episode. <laughs> but you, you clearly had the same one. So, so what's like the the um, the hardest part about being a stand up? Then, like, what what's the? Is there a hard part about it? Um, it can get a bit. It, it, it can get a bit. It can drain you a little bit, energy wise. Like it just like there's a mad. I don't want to sound like a proper hippie, yeah. you know. I like I like my psychedelics and stuff, but <laughs> we'll, get, <laughs> we'll get onto that. <laughs> but you know, there's like I'm a big I'm a big believer in. I, I never fully understood this until I started doing psychedelics, or could kind of verbalize it. But I think like we all share like a kind of energy. But when you're on stage, like there's, there's lights, everything's dark, like you've experienced it, but you feel all those people. You can feel them all there. So if like if there's a neck, if, if people think it's gonna be dying in your ass, that's gonna be hard. But that doesn't really happen that much to the point where like people get angry and boo at you and stuff like that, which would be nasty and bad. But um, but even when you smash it, that high is so high that you've got to then come down from there somewhere and you get home and you're like, you go from that to going home and you're just like sat there and you're, you can get quite like, you have to learn to deal with that and get like kind of have coping mechan- mechanisms for that because I've had a few where I've like I've absolutely smashed it. I remember last year I filmed it and put it in because we filmed the behind the scenes. And I had this, did two shows in Newcastle, two, like two and a half thousand people in each one, stand innovation at the end of it, it was incredible. Come home and I was just sat in my house and I was like, never felt more depressed in my life. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And I just had to film it. And I think that's the hardest bit is getting like, getting used to that. Cause you feel like, you, cause you don't feel like you can talk about that because you feel like you're being a prick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause like you got, like you're moaning about something that like, cause you're in a blessed situation where loads of people, but on paper kill for. Yeah. Then yeah. like, it still takes its toll on you. It's still, de- there's still hard parts to it. And you still mentally got to deal with your own shit. So that, that's that, that's um, probably one of the most eye-opening things that I've seen from your content. Like when you were on the James English podcast and you were talking about that situation in particular, mm-hmm. to be to to go from that highest high to be when like I know you like as you are. You know, like you yeah. you are just a normal bloke, quite quiet, quite timid. You know to go from that to then go sitting in your house, like, you know, family, dogs, like whatever, you know, you yeah. just sat there. That must be the, like a, a wild sort of experience. It like, is, it's, it's weird just even after like, you just, like 10 minutes after the show, you're just like, it's just life normal again. It's quite a surreal thing to do and you can't really remember it. What's that feeling like when you've, you've closed a show and like, is it literally the highest <coughs> high? Are, are you, are you, you're just buzzing off it. Yeah. You're just buzzing off it. Like you, I mean, that ring walk was pretty good. Do you know what I mean? If you felt that, you were behind me. Yeah, you could yeah. feel that energy in that room. Like that's like it's like that for an hour. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and then you gotta like come down to earth, and it's just every high has an inevitable low, doesn't it? Can you relate to that, Adam? Because like, if just from who me? You know, <laughs> so this is a weird one, right? So like, you see your audience, right? You see yeah, your yeah. fans. You see your I did audience. Wonder about this to be honest, because I do when I watch your stuff you don't see your fans or your audience you just get comments like is it is that relatable or i can kind of relate it on a level it's probably not the same probably not as acute i guess because like paul sees you know all the faces i'll see you know people smiling i can imagine what like for me when i get um you know i've, I've talked to you before about when i get i'll get messages from people and they'll be like you know um, I've, I've had a bit of a rough year or a rough week and mm. i've just watched your videos and they just put a smile on my face that to me is really yeah that's like I can't articulate how gratifying that is to me. I, I feel like blessed to be able to do that. But you get to see that, don't you? You get mm. to see the smiles on people's faces. Or if the light, if the lights are good, the house lights are good. <laughs> um, and I think I, the, the, I've told you before, man, the, the time I get, I feel the, the lowest is when I'm not making stuff. So like if, if something goes up on a Sunday, then I'm going to get all the comments on a, you know, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, People say, oh, I love this video, you know, this and that. And then when Thursday rolls around, especially now I'm only doing one video a week usually, I kind of feel, I don't feel like, uh, I wouldn't say depressed, but I feel a, a bit of a loss, you know, a bit idle and whatnot. So I guess it's probably like that, but just like a larger peak and a and a, uh, and a larger trough, you know, for Paul. But um, I get it, I totally get it. They say that about athletes, don't they? Musicians as well, you know, yeah. people that are out in front of a big crowd yeah. they can see a lot of the time that when they're not there, and you know, because I get with footballers, you can go in and train and whatnot. Musicians, you're probably practicing. If you're a comedian and you've got it all up there, there's probably a little, probably little that you need to do outside of the actual performance, I guess. So you probably feel a bit, 
like a spare part, I guess. Yeah. Was it the highs and lows of, I guess, performance and the success that led you to then go into the world of psychedelics and, and DMT? Like what was, what was that catalyst? I think so. Yeah. I mean, just everything else as well. Just like, you're just chasing that like high, aren't you? And it's a, it's a hard one to match. That's why I end up buying Lamborghinis and shit like that. It's yeah. <laughs> stupid. Cause you're just trying to chase that like buzz that you can't get anywhere else. Um, yeah, so, I mean, psych- psychedelics not... To, it's, I, I try not to bunch psychedelics with everything else. Right, okay. <clears throat> so don't, psychedelics are work, I think. They're Psych- what, sorry? The work, the more work. Like, it, it, if you're going to take MDMA or cocaine or something, you can have a party, but, like, no one's... I've never I've never once had... I've had a lovely time on mushrooms and stuff. Yeah. But I've never once gone, I'm going to do that again tomorrow and the next day. Right. Because it, it's just... It, it It's very cleansing, but it's like... Can be a lot of effort doing psychedelics. So what 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 led you to uh, wanted to try it then? You know, like w- w- in, in the first in the in first place, yeah. Show yeah. me, mate. I've got this one. I've got. <laughs> 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 That's me thinking of like some no heroic backstory. I'll be honest with you. I thought like, and it, the whole end of my show last year was about the first time with the DMT. Right. So and I was terrified of doing anything like that, but he was like, it only lasts ten minutes, and I was like, all right. And in my head, I was like, for what I expected it to be was nothing like what it is because I was like it is just gonna go it, it just as I see some weird shit and then it'll, it'll just be it, I'll laugh and it'll be or it'll something will be a bit scary but it'll be over um but it wasn't that it just like I felt like it just connected me to this mad spiritual like was that like the um when we were talking about ayahuasca last week it's the that, same thing the same yeah. thing yeah yeah it's Sweet. the it's kind of, it's the it's the components of ayahuasca which as this but ayahuasca is mixed with something else so your body because if you at DMC it would just break down it wouldn't do anything to you yeah. so you have to smoke it but um, ayahuasca is mixed with a couple of other leaves so you can drink it your page and then it lasts a lot longer because it's gone through that and it's gone through your stomach and so it lasts about six hours. Well, you throw up you throw up so yeah you'll purge and stuff sometimes. What yeah. does purge mean? Does purge mean throw right, up? Right okay yeah. yeah. But it, it's Fuck, like, I'm not doing. I take it back. I'm not doing that shit. About two weeks ago, we were, I was talking about that we'd been chatting about it in Prague, and uh, he'd fully I, convinced me when I was signed up. He was, was like, like oh, yeah, "Get me on the plane." He was like, "Let's go, let's go to Peru and try." It. And I went, "Oh, Paul, come!" I'm like, I'll well, definitely. Come. I'm like, "We'll film it. We'll do. We'll do like a little documentary series." <laughs> because <laughs> when you when I you, didn't you, realize were, you th- why, why why do you? Yeah, it I just mean, not everybody, but like some because it's just like it's 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 a shock to your body isn't it so your, body thinks kind of it's, your body thinks it's poison oh so it's trying to like reject yeah, yeah, yeah. it because yeah. when we were in Prague you and Pavel were talking about it and you were talking about your experiences on DMT I guess or ayahuasca I don't know which one you'd said we were you'd... talking about uh, mushrooms or just mushrooms because yeah, yeah. you both said that it was almost like a life changing experience yeah yeah it, that DMT definitely was the most life changing experience I've ever had because that was your deterrent. You were like, I don't want it to yeah, change we, my we, life. Yeah, we talked about this. And I th- yeah, I don't, well, not necessarily I don't want it to change. It won't, like, it's not like you're going to wake up and everything's going to be like, oh, everything's different. But like, it's just, it, it just made me feel like there was more after. Like, I've, I was, I've always been an atheist. And I, 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 I mean, I was staunch. I was like, it's ridiculous to imagine there's anything after this. And then I felt it and I was like, that can't have been my mind. And now there's still a rational part of me that goes, it could be a construct of your mind but if it is then I my mean, mind is a lot more powerful than i imagined it was a lot of people say that don't they like uh, when you listen to that guy on uh <coughs> is it graham hancock on yeah. um joe rogan he says it like he you know he's a scientist or whatever but he, a lot of people th- explain it in in the framework of like a spiritual experience don't yeah. they but i think it's, even to me like I'm, I'm not like a recreational drug user like i'm, I'm not uh, judgy or anything like but i don't do anything right um so I don't even like smoke regular cigarettes. I, I would hate regular yeah. cigarettes. But like, I think what it is, is I don't even like the idea of taking, you know, if, if I got like well depressed or something, I wouldn't want to take antidepressants because yeah. I don't like the yeah. idea for, of, for whatever reason of something altering my consciousness, even to a small degree. So I think I, when you said, let's do it, I was like, okay, if, if, if you bring along a camera and we film it, then yeah, it'd be a laugh. We'll do it for the clicks. I don't but- think you should do that. No. I'm just going to put that out there. All oh, right, okay. It'll add an element to it that we will be conscious of. And you just got to do it. Experience. I'll, I'll ruin it, kind of Because you should really respect it because it's not, it's it's for you. And it's, it's for you. It's like, a, it's an internal thing. You should, if you're going to do it, it will be, I've never known anyone to do it and not benefit from it. Ah, that's, yeah, a, that's but a, if you put a camera on yourself, you're going to, because you know yourself, like there's cameras on you now. We're talking differently now to we did out there. Yeah, that's true. Because there's a camera on you, do you know what I mean? There's that yeah, element yeah. of like perspective there. Yeah, well, uh, keep, bear that in mind. Maybe we have to do it like... Uh, we'll go, we'll go solo. Yeah. 
to the if jungle. You're gonna do, if you want to film something, have two grams of mushrooms and just go, oh, look at that man. I fucking hate mushrooms. <laughs> I, I don't like mushrooms. Like, they even a regular kind. <laughs> Shooting <laughs> Fathom's Thursday, a Thursday upload where he has a bag of shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> you can get capsules, though, or chocolate and stuff. Imagine this <laughs> the munchies. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, It'd no, be like I mean, a PED for me. Would be, I'd, I'd that do a would few, be absolutely mental. I'd do a few before my next contest, yeah. <laughs> So the, so the actual sort of trip itself then that you went on uh, the first time, is that, that that is what's led on to your tattoos? Like you said, you've got... Yeah, yeah. So like, could you, do you want to explain a bit about that or is that not something you'd, you'd <coughs> no, discuss? I, it, like, that's, that's the end of my show last year. I was always take myself on top off on stage and explain the tattoo. Really? Yeah, I fucking ruined it. I should have seen you last year. I've just yeah, amazing I've snake. That was what I saw the first time. So I got, like, I got carried through a rainbow by a giant serpent and it was just telling me I was doing everything okay. I said, just keep it, making people laugh. You spread positive. The serpent was. Did yeah, it? But like when you say speak to, is it like it, a? No, it's it's kind of you know what it means. But it's not like so. It's I, not, I was going to ask you like what what kind of accent did the snake have? Yeah, was yeah. Like, you're I, right, mate. You're, I, you're doing well. Yeah, keep telling yeah, jokes. Well, I give him like a hippie accent in the show. Like, oh, yeah, you're doing really good, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just it, it's, it just tells you, and it's like telepathy. You kind of know it. Yeah. Like, I, I've got mother here that needs that needs finishing. So were you, were you sat in like a... We, she we, put me in a womb. I was sat in with her ass womb and she was cradling me in these blue... In between these blue pyramids. And I was like trying to ask her some kind of profound... It was funny. Because I was trying to... I think of a... Because I was aware I was with Mother Earth. Yeah. So I was like, ask her something <laughs> profound. <laughs> forgot, don't waste this opportunity. So I was like, uh, uh, am, I, am I doing everything okay? Am I, am I doing everything okay? And she just went, why, why do you care? And I was like... And I laughed and she laughed and I was like, yeah, but am I though? And she went, bye. And just gave me <laughs> 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 And I was just getting, I shot at it. I was like, <gasps> oh my God, that was weird. That was mad. Were you I never like, had to come back. When you did it, were you like at home or were you like in some kind of That was with the shaman. Oh, that was with an actual... Where, yeah. where was it? Where, what, what? It was in Liverpool. Was a guy, oh, it was in Liverpool. His name's Sha- oh, I can't tell his name. I keep getting him in love of the trouble. Okay. <laughs> uh, sh- Steve the Shaman or whatever from, it, it, uh, from it, Liverpool. It's actually Kev. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how long does it last? Like the, the ex- 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes. Does it feel like time dilates a bit though? No. It? So it feels like it's 10 minutes? It's a, it's a, it's, the way I try and describe it is it's a kind of split... It's a split consciousness. So you really... There's a lot going on and it's kind of like here so if you close your eyes you can you can focus on it but it's almost like almost out, always half out of view you can't really catch it um but you're always still aware that you're here and you can breathe and i'd be like the way every time i've done it like if we were doing it now you'd go and we'd just sit here quietly and just make sure you were okay and then you'd go and then i'd go that's 10 minutes each when you say go does, does anything <laughs> happen like what you'll, you'll just go I do that every time Josh talks to me yeah. first. <laughs> it's good practice. <laughs> right, and then you just like, what, then they just come back around a bit sweaty and they're like, oh, I'm cool. Yeah, not even that. Like, um, I mean, you can take the piss with it and push it too far. Rudy was it, <laughs> Rudy did it with me and, because uh, I had a vape pen. I shouldn't really say this, it's highly illegal. This is all jokes. Cuts <laughs> <laughs> Josh. <laughs> I, had a, I had a vape pen for it. So it's a bit weaker than the crystal stuff that you can get. So I was like, and, couple of you know, like once they tried they were like you do it first and i was like okay so i thought i wonder if you can like properly blast off with this so i hit it like hard like nine times and i went and these entities came to me and they were like dancing i was on this carousel it was just a party and i was having, having a fantastic time and i started feeling myself come out of it and i was like i'm not ready to come out of this yet so i grabbed it again and hit it again another six times and these entities just went got right in my face and we're like don't take the piss out of this. This is not for this. This is not what it's for. You know, this is not what it's for. And apparently, they should look. I was in my chair in the kitchen, going, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's in a ball, but it didn't. It wasn't terrifying. It was like kind of like being a toddler and getting told off by yeah. your mum. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's not going to hurt you, yeah, but like it's still a presence. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, I said yeah, to you. Yeah. 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 Whoa. Yeah. That's heavy, man. It's it's it's. It, I think it's. I mean, I don't want to ever. It, 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 Everyone's going to do their own thing and everyone's on their own path. But I think I've never known anyone to go, I shouldn't have done that. Never. <laughs> anyway. And I was terrified of it. And yeah, I'm and now a massive proponent. We just go see Kevin Liverpool, mate. Yeah. Give it a whirl. I can put you in touch with Kevin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he does Cambo as well. Cambo's mad. What's that? Cambo is like, yeah, I've got the little 
Mark, I mean, they burn, they're just fading now. They put little, they burn your skin and put tree frog poison on your arm. And then, then you purge. That's like a body cleanse. It's not high, it's not um, psychedelic at all. But it's like you purge and uh, you shit yourself a little bit. <laughs> right, so that's feels, cool, man. Welcome to my you're world. You're going to die for half an hour, but then you feel great for like months. What? I'm probably not going to do that. I'll Kev be honest Bird, with you. Kev burns your so skin. You put like, yeah, so you put like contact points on. So he did like seven on me. He does a little test one. And you're like, you feel like, you feel a bit ropey. And then he put like seven on and put it on. And I was like, I just felt like I was going to die for half an hour. And it's just like clears. It just dra- draws every toxin out of your body. I think I'd rather just not feel like I'm going to die. <laughs> I, f- I feel like I'm going to die a few times after eating stuff. Don't get me wrong, but like... But do you know what? Like, I've got to say to you, because I've never... I, I, obviously, I'm a massive fan of your videos, and especially when I'm dieting. Like, they're like food porn. I sit there. Like, it, it, I, I'd probably get a little bit more sexual about them than I should do. <laughs> Mate, I get these... Like, they're going, oh, you little slaggy thick on. <laughs> I get pictures from people watching in, like, bed. And you know when yeah, people... Yeah. There are, like, weird bumps in the bed. I'm like, is that that kind of bump? Or is it just, like, a fold in the... Like, oh, in get, the... It, get it in your beard. Go on. Get it in your beard. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of people do that, though. Yeah. That's why that's why that uh, you know Paddy the Baddy started talking about me all the time because he I think he watches them when he's you know he's yeah, dieting hard or whatnot. And I think it's great for that. But I, I I've only ever tried something. I tried to eat I, when I was getting this tattoo done. That's really weird. We were in the um, tattoo parlor and they were talking about a Krispy Kreme challenge. And the girl said oh, I can, I'd done eight in an hour. And I went eight, eight. And she went, Wow, when did you reckon you could do it? I went, I could eat Krispy Kremes until you physically made me stop eating Krispy Kreme. <laughs> And she was like, you couldn't. I went, I could. She went, how many? I went, I could do 20. Easy. Easy. So she, they were like, all right. So I had to go back in for the next sitting on the Monday. Got there and they had two boxes of Krispy Kremes. <laughs> and I was like, all right, yes, I am. So I thought, I, I, I watched you. I thought, I'm going to have a little game plan here. I'm going to have a little game plan. <laughs> I thought, I my mean, game plan was wrong because what I did, I thought, I'm going to go for the ring ones first. I'll smash the ring ones in, get through as many as I can. And then I'll have like a load of time to get the rest in. So like I, I smashed 10 ring donuts in like eight minutes and I thought I'm flying. <laughs> I'm absolutely flying. This is a piece of piss. And I could see him looking at me because the, the fourth it was, if I, if, if I lost, he got a tattoo loser with a donut on my leg. <laughs> she still hasn't done yet. So still have got, and then if, if I won, I get to tattoo him. And I was like, well, you're losing either way because my tattoo is going to be shit. <laughs> so I did like, t- I got the 10 done and then 11th one went down and I got like one of those pink ones, you know, with the jam in. That's the twelfth one, and a bit into it, and I've never felt anything as bad in my life. My body just started shaking, and I was like, oh, "What the fuck's this?" And I was like, "Oh my god!" And I literally couldn't put a donut next to my face without going, Whoa, and like my mouth was watering, and I started drinking coffee and stuff. So I was like, he drinks coffee, Black he drinks coffee. coffee. Yeah, get me some coffee. <laughs> Trying to get coffee, then dipping them in coffee and shit. I got to fifteen in like twenty-eight minutes. And I was like, I can't do it anymore. He's like, you've got half an hour. I went, mate, I would rather you tattooed a massive cock on my chest right now <laughs> than eat any more donuts. I haven't been able to eat a Krispy Kreme since. <laughs> it's the worst thing I've ever done. Wow. I feel 50, that, I mean, you, you, you should, you, we should have like, yeah, no, you well, want to say that's now. pathetic. I know you don't. No, no, I, think, I mean, like, <laughs> the thing is with like Krispy Kreme, I, I think it's harder when you go for the ones that are, they've got stuff in them naturally, right? So you could yeah. probably, you probably could have done 20 if it was just all ring ones, right? But um, every, everyone, thinks they can eat more than they can like yeah. everyone like they're only only people that can eat a lot i think are more rational about it i think usually you get people oh yeah i've tanned that and then it's like well there's a reason only two people have ever done this or that or, yeah. you know but i don't think 15 is terrible i did i did the, a similar thing with uh, eddie hall like ages ago you know a, a yeah, yeah, former yeah. world strongest man whatever um and he was he's one of those guys that like we had done that we'd filmed it almost famous in leeds because he was preparing for this tv show he did um so we didn't like a a burger and 20 wings, a milkshake or something. And I just battered him at that and he'd not finished it. And then afterwards, so after we finished that, he's like, I want to do something else. Let's go see who can eat the most Krispy Kreme donuts. I'm like, Eddie, you just got absolutely destroyed. <laughs> You've got no room left. That's why you lost. So then we went out and we ate like, I think he wanted to do like a dozen Krispy Kremes as quick as possible. So I'd done like, after we'd eaten, I'd done a dozen in like, I don't know, a couple of minutes. And he's like on a third one after 10 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, lad, lad just give it in, will you? You know, like, but you know, when people are that stubborn, they just don't realize. He's like, no, I can beat. I'm like, you can't beat me. Stop. <laughs> people are delusional as well, though, out there. Yeah. Because like, we, we did a eating challenge at the beginning of the week, which will be coming out at some point. And I would tell you a couple of lads about it. And they're like, I, I'd beat him. I yeah. could beat him. And I'm like, you fucking couldn't, mate. Like, I'm telling you, you couldn't. And I, I even said it when we were filming. I'm there doing this eating challenge with Adam. And I'm like, people had killed to be in this position. I don't know how I've been dragged into it, though, because, like, <laughs> I want to just do a podcast, you know? 
<laughs> and all lads are watching me and I'm gipping. Like, I almost threw up at the end. It was like, the, I don't know how you do that for a living, hey, Sometimes I look at them, you know, some of them breakfast you eat and stuff. And I'm like, that can't fit in your body. <laughs> you must be sound saying she's shitting at the same time. Like, like play though. Wish I could do that. Maybe if I'd like one of those, what they call them, those bags, you get a stomach yeah. thing. Yeah, on. like an lost in my bag. Yeah, yeah, yours would have to be a bin bag though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How does it? How do, did you have you ever like asked the doctor like how you are? Because you like you're not a big guy. No, oh, look at him. He's in your pocket. Yeah. 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 No, I, how, I, I, how you can fit like ten pounds of food in your body or whatever. It's no because I think I understand. But most people I think when I've explained it on like videos in the past understand it because it's just like a stupid human trick, right? Because like it, f- from an evolutionary perspective, people have the reason your stomach stretch you, right? Is based on depending on where you are in the world, you can have different types of you know. Some people might need to eat loads of low, lower calorie, high volume food, yeah. like if to to live. Other like we p- people in England and America and whatnot have probably have a, a lower than average stomach capacity because you get lots of, uh, you know, it's freely available. There's freely available high calorie food, you know, mm. so you don't need loads of space in your stomach to, to stay the same way. Do you? Whereas if it's something I do is it, the stomach just has the ability to stretch like an old rubber band. Right. So if you do that enough times, I've been doing this fucking years now, you know, nearly 10 years or whatever that over time, it just gets stretchier and stretchier to the point that it's fucked up. Now. <laughs> <I like. laughs> but it pays the bills. Um, do, you not, so yeah, do you not worry about that? Like, no. Nah, when you're 60 and your stomach's just hanging out your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think when I'm 60, I'll be eating soft food anyway, right? So it won't really matter. But no, I, don't, I, I know enough about that. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like a massive geek for, uh, you know, like a biology and nutrition and whatnot. So yeah, I know like... What, you're, you're really into fasting and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. So, and I, plus I go, you know, I get my annual health check done and predictably I'm all right, but um, I, I might not always be like that. Who knows? It's an yeah. impressive trick that you've got there, mate, isn't it? Is it something like, is it something like turned off in your body that most people have got turned on? No, that, that where, the, where everyone else goes, I can't eat anymore. You're just like, no, I'm fine. I think you, you have to have that to a degree, like to when you start off, right? So like when I started doing this, I wasn't, I couldn't, you know, smash whatever 10 pounds of food. You, you'd have a normal, yeah. you, you kind of build it up gradually, right? And as you do that, you kind of, uh, you lose that. Um, it's, it's basically a gag reflex, right? So I, it's very rare that now, even in videos, like you'll see me go like, you know, but you, usually it's because I'm not- i my missus be dildos then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do get it. I, I, did, I told the story right when I did the Tamale World Championships when yeah. I threw up at the end of that. That's the first time it had happened in ages. Yeah. But that's, that's where it's more likely because I've seen it. You know, you're eating as much as you can in 10 minutes. So if you're trying to time like eight to 10, 12 pounds of food, whatever it is in, in 10 minutes, naturally you don't, you know, you don't have that time to kind of rest a little bit, make space. You just. How much did you have of the, of the poutine again? Oh, that was like 16 and a half pounds. I felt bad for that. Absolutely. So like when he first told me that 60, I, I could not like it. It's really difficult to like to comprehend what that might be like it's until sto- like, that's over a stone of poutine, yeah. isn't it? It's like two, I, it's like two, no, no, two big new like, babies until it? you've had a baby. And we had like a six, pa- you know, six pound baby, and I'm going, fucking hell! Adam had sixteen, like it's like almost three of these yeah. three babies of chips and gravy. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was that was rough. the worst part of that. Oh, that was afterwards. Everyone like queuing. You know, it was like twenty people queuing up to get pictures, and I'm like. Oh my god! I'd please don't throw up on these people. You know when you, this is what I realised on Monday after our challenge. So we like spoiler alert: we ate some chicken wings, right? My piss stunk afterwards. Like it's, oh yeah, it smells reeks. so bad. Yeah, yeah, because it's sort of toxic. Your body getting rid of. Uh, but I've the, never eaten to the point of where like it's it's altered. It, apart from like asparagus, that, that you know that, but like that's altered like your shit or piss that much. Oh, so yeah. like I can only imagine the like the <laughs> horror show that is your bogs. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty. I mean, like. I'm re- I, if you eat like I do, you, like hydration is top of your to-do list, right? So like, I'm, if you drink a lot of water, you're right. You're pro- you probably didn't drink that much, right? So it's every, all the waste is concentrated. Yeah. I, as soon as I, I don't particularly want to drink a lot, but once I've finished eating, like we didn't actually eat that much in that video, but um, <laughs> wait, yeah, you, were, you were dying, but I was like, George, I was chilling. George, how much did we eat? You did a really good innings, to be fair. Oh, thanks, mate. 43. I think 43 weeks. I, I, I heard the, the woman did 42, though. <laughs> exactly, right? The, the, G, the GM had <laughs> done 42. This is, I, I, I just heard that on the way, yeah. I reckon she was it. a bit cleaner with the wings as well. But um, <laughs> I heard they had a bite of 43 wings. <laughs> <laughs> like, he blew the fucking... He blew the crust off. He's like, oh, that's a, that's a wing done. You fucking shit out of Where did you see the footage? <laughs> I could easily do 45. Uh, right. Let's <laughs> fucking go. We'll have to get Paul back in. Cars and diet and so <laughs> 
well let's let's move on to then like, let's move on to why you're dieting because uh we like i didn't know that this were all going down so my first trip to octagon we've mentioned it on the podcast a couple of times uh i fly out to um just in case people don't know because there'll be people because paul's like actually famous people might actually listen to this this episode oh, sorry. so we talked about octagon <laughs> before which is like a it's like a, a mixed martial arts uh, promotion promotion right but they're fucking huge right they're both, like, a bit mm. like ufc but mostly in europe right mm. yeah and they're trying to like move kind of uh, further west would that be fair to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. They're, trying, they're basically trying to break into the UK. They're in yeah, Germany yeah. this weekend. And but yeah, Paul's doing a fight, isn't And it? Paul's fighting. Paul's fighting. <laughs> how <laughs> the hell did that. did that happen, mate? I don't know. Do you know what? I haven't told you this. But you know what I mean? Because they flew us to bed. Because Brian, uh, Brian Lacey was trying to get me to do it for months. And I was like, no. Because he saw me on the UFC thing. So I'm, I'm a big MMA fan. And he'd saw me on the UFC thing, rolling jiu-jitsu with Mark Goddard, who's a famous MMA ref, and getting absolutely squashed by him, which is where I met Rudy, really. Rudy filmed it and put a score, because I was like, because I was winding them up on Instagram, because I like winding fighters up going, I, like, you're only tiny, whatever. <laughs> and Mark Goddard was like, you couldn't tap me. <laughs> he was like, we'll see. Because he's like one of the first jiu-jitsu black belts in the country. He's a giant man. So he's just... So we had the scorecard and we, see, we, had, we rolled for like 25 minutes and seeing how many times he could tap me and I think it was, the score was ridiculous. Didn't even get, he was just throwing me around. How many were it, Rudy? Um, I think it was something like 26 to none. Yeah, <laughs> and he was being very zero. nice to me as well. <laughs> so um, Brian seen that and he was like, do the, come, and, oh, come, and do the, come and do this fight. And I was like, no, because I've been offered loads of them before. And I was like, no, I don't want, I don't want to start getting punched in the air at 40 years of age when I, when I speak for a living. Um, but we spoke about it a little bit and then I realized there was a charity that I wanted to do it for and I was like, I thought, so this would be, actually it'd be all right. I said, as long as you don't put me up against some fucking like 20 year old kid off Love Island or something who's got <laughs> nothing else to do with trainers, just made of abs. <laughs> um, she was like, okay, so you like come over and watch one of the, one of the events. So I was like, okay, yeah. So we flew us over to Bern and we got off the plane and you were there, weren't you? But as I walked up, it was, it was me and my missus and then you were there and I thought, is this the I'm fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. Thought, fuck, he's bigger than me. <laughs> Get the fuck out of you paid to say that. <laughs> fuck, he's bigger than me. Yeah, he's nice. bigger than me. And I was like, shit. And I was like, and so I didn't know whether to be nice to you or not. Because I thought, I don't want to be nice to him if I don't have to fight him. And then we got in the car and we just started chatting. Yeah. And, then, and I was like, oh no, I'm all right, I'm all right. Well, it was funny because like, um, I didn't recognize Paul. Like I'd seen, I'd only ever seen clips on, on social media. But I didn't recognize you, which is, I'm, I'm, I'm sure more people will say that, that like you, you don't obviously look like what you like on stage when you meet you in person. And uh, so I'm, I'm messaging Brian. I'm like, who's this again? You know, like mm. in car, we were chatting away. Long story short, we had, it was, how long did it take us to get from uh, Prague to Bruno? Like four hours in car, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And so by the end of it, we knew everything about each other. Yeah. So we were there with Laurie, wife's there, this, us, us two, and then, and then the driver. I think but we long, bonded over you, to, you first, you first. Yeah. Well, yeah, we got you, you came up and yeah. I, he went, I do this, uh, I do a podcast with this Ethan guy, and I went, it's not being meat food, is it? <laughs> and he went, yeah, and I went, oh, I fucking love him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. I'm just glad your wife was in the car, otherwise, he'd have been telling you to whip your dick out. That's, that's his yeah, girl, too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's he's, 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 he's telling me with that before. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, your wife was in the car. Anyway, sorry, go on. <laughs> she but, backed him up, to be fair. <laughs> But we ended up like, I ended up spending a weekend because it was the first time I'd been out to one of these shows. Obviously, Brian was like the connection for us all, but Brian's busy working. And I would film in like a bit of behind the scenes vlog at this point. But I, I was like the third wheel. I was like, I, I joked with him at the time. You know, when you go on holiday and you, make, you, you talk to somebody in an all inclusive once, and then that's it. They're like, what are you doing later? Are you having a drink? You? <laughs> I, was like, I was that guy. <laughs> so like, I was like really conscious not really to talk to him. He's no. there with his missus, like on fucking, you know, for a romantic <laughs> weekend. And I'm there by myself with a camera. It was hardly yeah. romantic, was it? <laughs> it was in there. No, I mean, if you had to, if you, if, if you imagine Eastern Europe. <laughs> that's what, that's what, that's it, what it is. It was like, it, honestly, it was, it was like, it was, it, rough, it was like 1988 East Germany. You know what's weird about that, like that place? So the hotels, like, right? Bernau itself was beautiful, but the hotel was mad. It was like something from like 70s. And every bed is not, it's not a single, but it's not a double. So it's kind of like three quarters, but they've got these massive pillows and like a single quilt. And there's like three in a room. <laughs> like it's the strangest Who booked the hotel? Did Brian set us up for you? Yeah, Brian yeah. set it up. I think that was the gag room, maybe. maybe you, didn't you want to just contribute room? a bit more? And then well, like- Your room must have been like that. Oh, huh? Yeah, it's bad. And my yeah. missus is such a nightmare with hotels. <laughs> huh? like, I, I don't think I've ever been. You, you, you can go to the finest five-star hotel on the planet and she'll walk in and go, there's got to be a better room than this. <laughs> and you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're in a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> so in there, 
she was not happy. I was terrified that was the first time I've ever been out, out there. So I literally just stayed, stayed in the hotel because I'm like, I, I don't know what it's like. I don't know if it's dangerous. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. But tell, we, had, we had a good laugh though, but it was, the event was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah. We had a dead good time. I was blown away. And I watched the two guys who fought on what we would be doing and I was like, I'd kill both of them right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what gave you the confidence. One of them had one in the head. So I mean, I don't want to slag people off. Slag them off. Get them in the headlock at one point and I was like, what the fuck are these doing? <laughs> what are they doing? Yeah, so I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. So had you done like jujitsu before? Having I've done this a bit done then, though. I've, I've, I've had a go and dabbled a little bit. And not into, I mean. But you're I not like I'm a total rookie. No. Like, you know what? You know what's what? Like, I look no, at, I, I look mean, at I'm the world's right. longest serving white belt, I think. Like, I'm not good by any stretch of the imagination. Because I'm trying to be very careful. Because if I go, yeah, I've done loads of jujitsu, people are going to expect me to be a lot better than I am. But yeah, I mean, I've done a little bit. Yeah. Um, in the past but it, it's one of those things jiu-jitsu is a, I've got a love-hate rate relationship with jiu-jitsu because it's really good for me it's really good mentally so the best antidepressant you could ever possibly have but also you inevitably do it five weeks and then your whole body falls to pieces <laughs> and you feel like all oh, your, your arms are held on my elastic bands which is how I'm feeling now my neck I, I had to get in the bath at three o'clock in this morning because I couldn't sleep because my neck's just like fused <laughs> <laughs> see that's what puts me I, 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 it's, I'm it's just a, a coward I don't want to get hurt yeah it's it's just, it's beating your body up and it's not even like you think it's hitting people hitting you but it's not it's you hitting them with your head like pinning them with your head yeah, and yeah. like having to use your head to like it's it's just oh. once you get it right it's worse as well yeah it's good it is good that i mean like that show in particular like the they weren't bad the celebrity super fight that they had like all of the fights were amazing and they, theirs were all, all right wasn't it um but you then got to come out to prague didn't you so like that would give you a bit of a taste but then you'd agreed to do the fight and you came out to prague last minute uh, yeah, at yeah. New Year, which then they said we're going to give you a ring walk. Yeah. So it's the final. It's the final show of the year. They're at the O2 Arena in Prague, twenty thousand people, and they're like, "What's your walkout song?" So you got to walk out in front of twenty thousand yeah. people. Like, me, what, what, what was the song? Thunderstruck by ACDC. Oh, you told me that actually. Good. That's I always good... walk out to ACDC. I was at Back and Black for tour shows. Yeah, and then I was like, I don't want to have the same one. I will pick Thunderstruck. And it was the pe- the best song. To me, like every ACDC, this is basically the same song. I'm just gonna offend you, but not joking. I mean, That's a good. It's a good song to come out. To it me. is. When it, whenever cause we were back today, we were getting ready to go, and, we, I, and I was remember saying to you, I was like, "These aren't gonna give a fuck about it." Yeah. Like, why I did say something like, I, "I did they kind of do do some kind of like promotional yeah, video to explain yeah, who you were?" Yeah. She did the promo, and, but yeah. then Andre, the guy, like the Bruce Buffer, like main guy, he hyped the crowd up. So I walked out and I swear it was the best walkout of any fighter on the whole night because I walked out and this like energy hit me and I just went, yeah, <laughs> I'm high-fiving people on the way past, but then it's going, then it's like thunder and everyone starts going thunder. And I'm, you said it was thunder. amazing. It was incredible. Boom. It was incredible. I was buzzing off him for about two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes in, Brian does like an interview with him, he walks off, I'm still filming him and he looks at me like, I smashed that. Like, <laughs> you smashed that. <laughs> it was such a good night though, man. Yeah, we're amazing, man. It was so the good. Seat. Although the highs the highest highs, the lowest low has been stuck in that fucking airport at six bells. So we watched oh, the we watched yeah. the fights till like one AM. Went to an after party, got picked we didn't even get picked up at four oh, o'clock. Mate. He was <laughs> we got to this fight, we got to this after party and he was like, I'm starving. I'm starving. And we got and Brian's like, there's food at the after party he got there. And it was goulash. Not a big fan of goulash, no, you know? But goulash, and all he had to have it on was a little tiny plate, and he's like, how the fuck am I going to have a plate of soup? <laughs> I've human. never seen him properly fuming, though. <laughs> he's just laughing at me. Like, Brian, Brian comes in, he gets his fucking plate of goulash, and he's dipping bread in it. It's like, it's lovely, but goulash. I went, what the fuck is that? I'm like, I might as well put it in my hand. I put a plate of soup. <laughs> It's like a stew on a, on a plate. Oh, I'm like, uh, fuck this after party. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, yeah, we'll go to after party. We'll stay up. We'll stay up. We walked into after party. 20 minutes later, he's like, I'm just going to get off, I think. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. So I had like committed to staying at that point. But again, when we were sat in that airport, so we've been awake at this point for like, I don't know, 30 hours. Some guy clocks him in the airport and walks up to me. And he's like, are you that? In fact, you were in the security queue, weren't you? You're in the security, and he's like looking, and you can hear like hot water, hot water, comedy, balls made comedy. Yeah, you can hear it in the background, and I'm like, mm. gets through security, sits down, and like we're both like dead. And this guy walks up, and he's like, "Are you that that funny guy from Hot Water Comedy Club?" And he goes, "Yep." <laughs> and this guy goes, "All right." And walks up. <laughs> 
And I'm like, that's the most awkward exchange. And he goes, I fucking love that. I love when people don't think of it, when they don't think it through. <laughs> it happens so often. People don't think of what they're going to say. And then they get into the conversation and go, ah, I've, I've, I've overextended it. <laughs> I've booked it. I don't know where to go. And I just, I, I should help them, but I don't. I, like, I feel awkward when, when you know, people say hello to me and they, like that, they'll be like, oh, I love your videos, mate. And I'm like, oh, cool. Then there's an awkward silence. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be like, so what's your name? Like, join the weather today? What are you doing around here? And yeah, I'm like, it's the worst when they don't move on. Yeah. You stand there and you're like, oh, shit. I imagine that was pretty bad after. I, I somebody recognised me. You know when I had that quite recent slight meltdown in the airport when I got detoured to Heathrow? Yes. So somebody was like, oh, baby, it's food. I'm like, I've been awake fucking 28 hours. I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, you're right, mate. Watch the videos. Oh, thanks very much. It just took so much effort. I was like, oh, yeah, so cheers, mate. See you later. Yeah. Instantly miserable afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. So the, the fight then. So you're obviously going to fight in November, but what do you make of your opponent? I'm the type of person, if I if I keep looking at him, I'll just start focusing on him and I'll convince myself. Like, much like when I, I'm like, fuck, he's bigger than me. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. Yeah. So I think the best way for me to do it is just not to think about him and just to think, Right, I'm gonna to have to fight on that day. He's gonna do what he's gonna do. If I just prep, prep as, as as well as I possibly can and get in, whatever happens once that cage door closes is gonna happen. I, I can, I'll be able to look myself in the eye if I prep properly for yeah. it and train properly for it. So like, I'm trying not to drink and stuff and just try and get myself in good shape. So how is training going? Because I know that you've uh, you've done some pretty. You've, you've already taught quite a few high profile gyms, yeah. and you've had some pretty sound advice from some UFC legends. Because in Prague, Brad Pickett gave you a bit of advice. Yeah, didn't yeah, it? yeah. So I've, I mean, Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> Brad Pickett. <laughs> All right, no, I never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Brad Pitt was in Fight Club. I realised that was yeah. fictional, but it might help. <laughs> He's also a good fighter in Snatch. But he yeah. gave me good good advice on a left hook. Um, yeah, I've, I've been quite lucky in that. I, I, I've, I've because I've, I'm a fan of MMA and I follow MMA fan uh, MMA fighters. I've I've come into contact and I've been to a good few UFC events and stuff. I've come into contact with a good few fighters, um, so I'm quite lucky in that people have been nice enough to let me jump in their gyms because I was really worried because I I'm on the road half the week every week, so I was thinking, how oh, am I going to get into? The, am I going to keep training properly? Um, but I've been lucky enough to get into good gyms like and train with Dan Hardy and John Kavanagh and 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 Brad's giving me some advice. I'm going to get him with Brad next month. Uh, Liam Madison in Leeds when yeah. I've been up in Leeds. Um, th- loads of good gyms. What yeah. were it like? Uh, what were it like? At SBG, so the home of Conor McGregor for those yeah. that are. Uh, yeah, it was. A, it's such a good place, and they really looked at that. If I, I, the thing you find about all these places is, you, you, I used to be really scared to go into these gyms, and I wanted to do it for years. And then you go down and it's like, it's nothing like you expect because you expect it to be full of like dead angry, like people scrapping each other and it's full of people fighting, but everyone's just dead mellow because you take all your aggression out. Everyone's really humble because they get squashed all the time. So no one's, no one's got any ego. Anyone with the ego gets filtered out pretty quick in those places. So there's a nice level, there's a nice hierarchy, which everyone respects. So there's like, I think in a, like a tribal sense, people feel really comfortable in there. Everyone's just floating around happy and you get a real sense of family in these places. So when you go in and you just show a bit of respect and it, like it's all about effort in those places. You don't have to be the best. You just have to turn up and not like and not be a quitter. So if, I think if you do that and you see that, then everyone just everyone's fine with you, um, and you just kind of get welcomed in. And I got probably they really look after me at SPG, and then uh, Kavanagh got hold of me at the end because I was again. I got <laughs> we can overlay this footage. <laughs> so I was like, so I was like, because it, it, we it was such a weird thing because I had training set up in Dublin. And um, it fell through, like, the week before. The guy I was training with, it was SBG Charlestown, who's, like, a, a subsidiary of SBG headquarters. And I was going to go over there because my coach, Tom Blackledge, knows Owen Roddy from there. So we all got set up. And then he was like, oh, I'm flying away on Thursday morning. I was like, oh, no way. But I knew you were coming over to film. So I was like, oh, God, I'm going to have to let these know. Because if they come all the way there and I've, I've got no training, it's going to be filming me jogging up the Liffey. <laughs> um, so uh, I... I I messaged Brian saying this might have fallen through and I'm going to try and find something else. Then someone had said to me, Chris Fields. So I was like, oh, I'll message him. But then it turned out the guy I'm fighting was training at Chris Fields that same day. And yeah. I was like, what are the chances of that? <laughs> and he's in Dublin the same day. So I was like, no way. So this has all fell through. And then uh, John Kavanagh followed me on Instagram. We just as a mad coincidence. 
And I was like, so I was messing with him. Yes, coach, thanks for the follow. And he went, oh, I've just come across your videos. If you're ever in Dublin, let me know. And I went, I'm there on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, oh, you want to come for a move around? So then I was like, um, so I was just, I said, see if you can tap me more times than Mark Goddard did. And he said, first one to die losers. And I was like, all right. I said, I'm bigger than you think though. And he's just winding them up. But mate, I've, honestly, I've never been guillotined so many times in my life. He was, he's an absolute wizard. And it's, he wouldn't let go of me either. You know, when you're like, so if you're rolling with someone, you then, you'll, you'll separate and you'll like, tap. yeah, get one of them. One of them and you go again. But he was just keeping all the hands. <laughs> <laughs> just dragging me around. And I couldn't get him off me. And it was so frustrating. It's mad. He went with me at one point. Really? Yeah. Wow. But to be fair, yeah. like, he said, it's not, a, it's not a UFC thing. Like, are we talking about the no, other thing? Because he come to the show, he, him and his missus came to my show in the night, and then he come backstage after it. I said, oh, I was saying, fucking insane to me, Mrs. Like, oh, what will leave me? <laughs> um, and he was like, to be fair though, you got me in North South, and I didn't expect you to have the pressure that you had. And he thought, I can't have this. I'll never live it down. So forth. I'm just gonna wet William. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of was a bit happy about that. That's, that, that's, that's uh, good. That's good yeah, for your yeah. uh, confidence yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, but. Um, Oh, he's so good. Like it's 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 amazing to see. You no, know, because I love it so much. It's like like I love watching it. It's amazing to feel how good some people are. It's really hard to tell, especially if you don't know what you're watching. Yeah, it's just it looks like people are just cuddling each other. You don't realize what goes into it, but like just those little like kind of technical aspects of it. That's where the grappling comes into its own. Like you, that that's where most fans need to learn a little bit about grappling to then appreciate the full what it is as a sport yeah because yeah, we all understand striking and people getting pencil left right and center <laughs> but uh, when that is goes... the funny thing i mean that fight that we watched in uh, prague that cater the, yeah the kickboxing fight was one of the most fun fights i've ever seen like, me and you were like <laughs> we must have sounded like we were like <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so the one you vlogged yeah well, yeah, yeah but there was one doing fight. your joke <laughs> There was one fight in particular, this Kieta, K- K- he's fighting this weekend actually. They did like an underground rules, which were like small gloves, kickboxing only. And uh, it was three rounds. Three, three minute rounds. Three, three minute rounds. And they just battered each other. And we were like, this is the best fight of the night. And it was so good that we're like, we, like who's won, you know? So they go to, obviously all oh, finishes. We thought that's it. And uh, they go, to get all the scores in and they basically go, it's a draw. And we're like, fuck it, fair one. It's a, what a fight. Yeah. You know, the crowd's the winner. It's a draw. And then Andre, who's like the Bruce Buffer, went, one more round. And we went, <laughs> one more round? Like, <laughs> we're off again. No, Honestly, man. mate, it was fucking it's, incredible. It was lunacy, though. Yeah. He was just absolutely, he was just punching each other. I mean, it's, it's it, it, he was just welling each other and punching each other, like, Solidly for nine minutes. There's nothing like there's nothing better than seeing it live. Like you, you, I don't know though, but that one you took me to uh, <laughs> wherever it was, man. I felt fucking ill after that. Mostly that was because that dude stench. Some dude didn't didn't bathe for like six months on purpose before this fight. Oh, I'm doing that definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We took oh, him. Man. We, me fingernails, there, man. I took yeah. Adam to the Barnsley Metrodome uh, <laughs> to. Uh, and we're, we're all, good. all expenses paid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he got me a fucking iron broom. We <laughs> got there. It was a local promotion, you know. So like, it, 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 all right. it, were, it were a good night. I, I enjoyed it. Some level that is speaking of cocaine, though. I've never it was like a fucking uh symphony of sniffs when I went in the yeah. toilet. <laughs> All you could hear was just like, <laughs> like constantly as you're taking a pee. But um, yeah, that was that was um, it, we, we only finally got like ring ring cage side ring side uh, that towards the end, yeah, which is was good because that's when the better fights are on, right? But um, yeah, there's like one guy that didn't wash, so like I could taste him, you know what I mean? Like, from fucking <laughs> 20 yards away. honestly, mate, like I've never I did not know that one. one person from 30 yards away could smell that bad like i had to wash my i think i might have burnt some of my clothes actually <laughs> and there was that guy in the kickboxing dude at the end who like he was getting yeah. pummeled for two rounds and he came back and uh he ended up leg kicking that guy to death didn't he yeah it was class. Not, to, not to literal death but like he, he won but it was bad because, well, I, I thought it was quite funny because the guy that was the favorite was doing all these mad spinny kicks like he's on street fighter 2 or something yeah. and he <laughs> brought like about fucking 50 people with him all these scottish people and then he got Killed by this uh, this local geezer. We had like three mates in the crowd, spamming. and then it all started kicking off at crowd. And I'm like, thank, thank fuck, we're behind this fence here, you know, okay? Yeah. Like, <laughs> cause it I was that. a bit like that. I was like, yeah, it was like kicking off. Well, I mean, the um, your fight in particular. So you're doing it for charity, right? So yeah. tell us a little bit about the charity. Uh, it's called Weapons Down Gloves Up. So it's a charity set up in Liverpool. It's there's a lot of knife crime and gun crime. It's like kids and gangs and stuff like that. So it's designed to get them out of doing that and get them into combat sports, but also they have programs to get them into jobs and employment programs and give them employment skills and stuff like that. It's set up by Tony Bellew and Molly, Molly McCann. McCann yeah. and 
Um, it's set up by a, 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 a team of people. Um, a guy called Billy Moore is involved with it and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's a really good cause. So when it came round, and it was just a, at the time that was in me at that charity, and I thought, well, this would be a good because it, it, I'm not a fighter. I, I I like dabbling in this kind of stuff, but like the idea of actually getting in and fighting does terrify me. Um, so I thought if I can do it then at least it shows anyone can do it. And it also just the experience of training. It's been really good for me mentally, just just getting in and training and having that routine and kind of, um, it just takes all, it, it, I float, nothing's bothering me. Do you think it'll be, uh, it'll be forever in your life now moving forward? So obviously not to the I extent think so, of- yeah. of, uh, so, yeah. even like talking, like, uh, going back to earlier on when we were saying about managing those highs and lows, it's really helping with that because- like I'm not like I'm not having those kind of big adrenaline spikes and dumps because I'm just feel like I'm dealing with stress a lot better. Yeah. Just because after you've been battered and nearly killed in the day, what uh, uh, someone not laughing at you is not going to stress you out that much. <laughs> it's class, mate. It's so admirable that you're giving away like the hundred percent of your purse to charity because like it, it, there's that means that there's no reason like that, that's not your reason for doing it, is it? Is the money yeah. is not the reason? In a selfish way, that's helping me a little bit mentally with it because yeah. if, if I I wouldn't want to do it for money because. Then I think, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I love the sport. I love like, that. That's so you don't turn it into one of those gimps. Can I say gimp? Probably can't. You can, can. I think you can say gimp. Can you say gimp? Have you, have you seen some of the stuff he puts online? I think we were like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm a professional comedian. I can't, I can't say that. Should I just put that in my bio? Yeah. Occasional crap professional comedian. <laughs> Occasional well, comedian. Yeah, no, that's because that's what people hate about this whole like uh, celebrity boxing thing, isn't it? Not the, the only thing I hate about it is that like it's people, you know, that are living out their, their own little unilateral Rocky fantasy. Yeah. Whereas if you're, you're saying, I'm not a fighter, I'm doing it for charity. That's a great, that's yeah. a, that's a yeah. good reason to do it, right? Yeah. Rather than pretending you're the baddest man on the planet. I mean, you might be, I don't know, but like. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, I yeah. love it, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to see you fight. We got, we going? We got, we, we're going to get tickets? Yeah. Like, so it's fucking, it's like, like we had a this call. He, he said to me today, he's like, are we going to get tickets for this? I went, well, you told me, like when we I had went, conversations outside, well, I'm gonna, try and make it like it's a real, the real first time. So I sold it. It's like, and you just said, oh, we said that outside. <laughs> fucking nobby. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm going to be there. And I said, I'll get you a ticket. He's like, but am I going to be like in, in rafters? I went, well, I'll try to get you a seat next to me. I'm like, you yeah. can be like- Yeah, give, next- me, give me a camera or whatever. And I'll just, put, you know, like I'll yeah. bring the A7S3. I'll just, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you can get our, if you can get our, our ringside seats behind the- Behind Brian. Are you going to come to some more shows this year then if you can make it? I don't it? know if I can. I was supposed to go on Saturday to Munich because I'm actually weirdly off for the night but because um, I planned to take it off for Valentine's Day so me and Lars were going to go over but yeah. More the fuck is back. that coming up? What day is that? Yeah, that's like three days away. Four, five days away. What day is it? 12th? 14th? 14th. No, next Tuesday it is. Thanks for reminding me, fellas. <laughs> I'm going to give Mrs. Beard a new dildo. <laughs> <laughs> but you not make, you can't make it out then, no? No, I can't go because I couldn't get back. I, I have my kids on a Sunday and I just couldn't, couldn't get back in time. Yeah, fair um, enough. So yeah, I can't go. Um, but I'll be watching. I'll be watching. I'm going to pay-per-view code and have a little watch. Some good fights on the card. This is, it's a great card. Like I'm, I'm well excited. First time we go to Munich. I'm literally leaving here in what an hour to go to the airport to get there so we've been to Munich before i have yeah i don't remember it That's well because I, I was drinking steins like this big yeah same um, I, 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 like, I thought i was dying though i went to one of my my brother-in-law sister beard who was a big fan of yours um her brother her, not a brother she didn't marry a brother her now <laughs> husband who was my brother-in-law i went to his uh stag right and that was in munich and uh obviously eating like i do people expect you to drink a lot as well so i, I remember necking a few of those Stands, I thought I was going to die the next day, but it's a very clinical city, isn't it? I think that's the way to describe it. It's kind of clean and tidy. Yeah. Um, I, I like it. It's cool. I love German food as well. So <laughs> that was my opening joke on the, uh, which didn't make sense to anybody else but me and him. But when we did the live show, he was like, look out for my brother in law because he, he looks exactly like the head of Art Attack. <laughs> so I get on stage <laughs> <laughs> and I went, What's going on? Fucking hell, is that the head off Art Attack? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else is laughing because it's such an in joke. <laughs> but he does. It, it made me laugh that you, you, you remembered that. Speaking of jokes, though, so Paul, in honor of you being the most famous person we've ever had on the podcast and being a professional comedian, um, Adam's bright idea was we should both tell you a joke or two, and then you can decide who's got the most potential to become a stand up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, he's like, fucking, what a shit fuck's, idea. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Yeah, no, neither of us have much, much potential, but I'm, I'm going to have to, this is probably like, 
I'm failing from the get-go because I need to remind myself. No, go, 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 I'm, no, right. go, I'm really that. hoping Adam comes like completely left field here and goes like, completely racist. Or <laughs> <laughs> God, no, come on now. I'm, I'm, I'm still very cancelable. If anyone cancels Josh, he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, you know? I'm on, I um, right. You, are you going to go first? No, you go no, first. No, no, because I always go first. Fuck no, you. Because when we had Jimmy Hill on, I did the f- pitch first so, and you, you had the better pitch, so you go first. All right, so, so get this then, lads. I was there. Uh, <laughs> like now then, now then. Get this then, lads. <laughs> so down at the White Rose Shop Centre yesterday. Yeah. So stop talking to me. Uh, this is my bit. I thought it was yeah. a bit. You, oh, no. you got to just roll with that. Have you? Yeah. Bearded prick. Well, what would you say to me, Cloud? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be quite nice to him, too. What, because you know it's him? Yeah. No. But no, I think he's, he's got a happy face, hasn't he? <laughs> what? You can tell he's a fan. Nobody's ever said that about me. People know I'm unapproachably miserable. You are. Anyway, go on. What was your break? <laughs> right, sorry, yeah, yeah. Go on, Mr. Comedian. So I was, I was at the White Rose Shop Centre yesterday and I, I parked up and I was going inside and I saw this lady sat outside and she was, she was just beside herself crying, absolutely in tears. And uh, I couldn't help but go up to her. And I don't like to talk about like my philanthropic efforts, you know, because I'm just a humble guy. But I saw her and I said, well, you know, what's wrong? She's like, she's absolutely gutted. She's like, I've, I've lost my money. I'm, I'm going on holiday tomorrow and, and I, I don't know what to do, you know? And I said, bloody hell. I said, well, tell you what, I've got hundred quid, so I'll give you hundred quid, and you know you can go get some money for your holiday. And I felt really good about it. She was really appreciative of it, so I went I went in, did my shopping, got home, and to be fair, I felt better about it because I found two thousand quid in, in car park in an envelope. So, <laughs> fuck Almighty, that was <laughs> it. Wasn't worth it. The juice wasn't worth the squeeze, there, lad. <laughs> and I feel like you'd rehearse that as well. I haven't rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> his biggest his biggest focus though was saying the word philanthropic properly. I know it was. I know it was. <laughs> I was expecting the longer that went on, the bigger the payoff had to be. I know. I it, it, that, yeah, but you do say that like the crowd is harder when it's smaller. So yeah, if that'd be on the stage. There was too much tension and not enough oh, release there, yeah. Right. Was that right? Well, I mean I do equally poorly, right, mate? So I'm gonna go for mine here, right? You ready? Let me just remind myself of it. I'm oh, fucking it really imp- well, you've got a big fucking screen in front of you, so don't pretend like you weren't taking cues <laughs> off it. I wasn't. <laughs> Someone tried to sell me a TV the other day. He said the volume button's broken, but you can have it for a tenner. I thought, I can't turn that down. <laughs> <laughs> he like, look. That is better than yours, though. <laughs> <laughs> that was because it was a shit joke, but it was it so was short. You didn't, you didn't care that it was The thing short. is, though, he, sold, he, he had that cheeky, like, you can sell a you shit can, joke by that. being right, cheeky. Yeah. And if he did you, five you of them in a row, Go the shit in the would become yeah? the funny. I, I, I think I got one more. Do you know diarrhea is hereditary? Apparently, it runs in your jeans. <laughs> <laughs> we should have done it with You didn't want to laugh at that either, then, did you? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I think that's all I got. Any more, no? I think, oh, I think he wins that. I've got one more. I'll go on. Um, I, I got one. I nicked nick this off Twitter. <laughs> so I all these off Twitter, man. Fuck off. No, they're not all off Twitter. <laughs> yeah, they Some are. Some of them more deeply. Re- they're all nicked, but they're, they're basically they're not all off Twitter. Um, I got a new part time job the other day, crushing cans. So depressing. <laughs> <laughs> that's my type of joke. The one, you know, shit one-liners. Yeah, a pun. Yeah, the, like, the, that's my. Man, well, you, you know, got, you watch the videos. That's that's my level of joke. Your career's like just started right there. Yeah. Like when you when you retire from food, this could be. No, your thing. I could I could never do it. Brian Lacey said that he was like, oh no, I think you got it. Takes I'm like, nah, I couldn't because I get up on. Set. One thing I couldn't do would, would be like hecklers because you know you can make it entertaining. I'd be like, security, get this fucking dick out. Of <laughs> A lot of people do do that though. I'll do it. Yeah. Just like, I'm not dealing with that. Sounds fuck off. I, do you reckon, I was going to ask you earlier, do you, is, that, is that like for a, a professional comedian, is that like an opportunity? If somebody heckles you, are you looking forward to that? No. No? No, it, I mean, no, it's very rare people do. And if they do, it's normally illegible shit. Yeah. Um, no one shouts out who's got anything to add. Like, yeah. from no, I, I, it's the difference between someone shouting out or me talking to someone and man said, I mean, then that's fine. But when people shout out, I would say like, I'm a professional comedian. I've done this for a long time. So in as much as you can be validated about being funny, I am pretty sure that I'm funny. <laughs> but even I, if I was sat in that crowd and there's a professional comedian on stage, I would never have the stupid levels of confidence to go, this needs me to be involved. And <laughs> if you've got like that, that yeah, if you've got that, you're clearly mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> got that, George. <laughs> 
Have you got anything? Is, is it, we're going to close the show, mate. We're I just want to ask. Can I ask Paul real quick? Though? I'm, I'm, no, because I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm on, yeah. I asked Brian the same thing. Do you have like any favourite comedians? Like, or any not not that you looked up to, but that you like to watch? That I like to watch now. Yeah. 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 Now or like in the past, a lot of the, my favourite comedians are like. I don't even think they're alive, let alone like still. <laughs> yeah. You know, practicing. I always say because you get asked this question. Uh, I always say like my favourite comedians to watch are like people who come around, like Danny McLaughlin and. Uh, Phil Chapman and Callum and, and like Dan Nightingale and like yeah. you met and, uh, and Adam and but people who do the circuit now because um, they're just if you see them in clubs they're just always better like I remember seeing John Bishop in a club and he was phenomenal like John he's got his own show now hasn't he yeah, he's, yeah so like so people like that I've always looked up to like I always looked up to John but um, I always remember back in the day if I think about like early influences and if I look at my style the way I do material I remember Dave Allen um, if he, I mean, there's a guy he was big in the late 80s early 90s and I, I think he was the pioneer of modern form stand up because he used to sit on the sit, he, had, he was huge he had his own show on ITV and he'd sit or BBC and he'd sit in a sit in a chair Irish guy he'd have a glass of whiskey and he'd just tell these really slow stories oh, um, yeah, but if, 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 he's got a bit about teaching a child to tell the time and it's one of the most beautiful bits of stand up I've ever seen in my life and it's just, and no one was doing that then. Everyone was just doing jokes. And he yeah, didn't yeah. do jokes. He did stories. stories. Um, so, yeah, he was a master of storytelling. And I think, yeah, that's 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 the kind of stand-up I like. I love watching one line. It's like there's some, like there's a Mark Simmons and Gary Delaney. I think it's a t- the two best one-liner comedians going now. Um, and I love watching them. But I get, like, I find myself getting fatigued watching one-liner comedians after about 20 minutes. Yeah, like I can't. You should catch the pace of it. Yeah, you yeah. And then you're just waiting for the punchline because you, you, you get the rhythm of it. You probably got to tell more jokes as well, haven't you? If you've got, oh, like, yeah. if you've got to be seven hundred well, one lines well, to Gary, fill it. Gary Delaney, I remember because I used to watch him and go, "How do you remember that?" And he has he has to build like a memory palace. So he yeah. gets on his whole shows like so he gets up in the morning and he gets on his first jokes on his bedside table and it's all him getting ready to leave for the gig. Yeah, and that's how he remembers his like jokes. A mnemonic device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I don't have to do that because mine's just. <laughs> two stories, two yeah. long stories. Yeah. It's good, I, I've got one last question. Are there any? I'm gonna I'm gonna drop one more in afterwards. Okay, it's just coming now. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's short. It's short. Are there any like um, people in in comedy that uh, that are basically dickheads that you wouldn't expect? Because like I think of like John Bishop, John Bishop, right? And you can't <laughs> help but think <laughs> he's put him on the spot uh, maybe you can't, don't answer if you don't want it. But like John Bishop is the nicest. Man. Yeah, so like you look at him and go, he's the nice. But nice could you imagine fella, him yeah. like? Because like, there's this there's this guy that I know, beard meets food, and on camera. <laughs> He's like the nicest guy. <laughs> and then in real life, he's such a prick. Who's the equivalent of Adam in comedy? Uh, oh, if you can say it, we'll bleep it out. I'm, like, I'm, I, I think I could hazard a guess at like who's, but I don't really know that many comics now. Who would you say? He's, he's a, a bit of a dick. Yeah. But that but that comes across like he's not a dick. Uh, Russell Howard. <laughs> I actually quite like it. I, I, I quite like him, but I, I can imagine maybe he's not quite what he seems. Mm. I've, I've, I suppose you can't answer it, can you? I've never met Russell Howard, no. so I don't know. I I mean, I don't know. I'm, I, I, that feels yeah. like I've got something. I just plucked <laughs> out. No way. I'm not, I don't know anything against Russell Howard. You've got beef with Russell. Clip it, George. <laughs> I've, 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 notoriously, and I don't know this, this is conjecture, so I'm going to distance myself from it, but apparently Peter K is a <laughs> Oh, I could have told you that. Yeah, you, you're the biggest Peter because I when we I thought we were going to discuss comedy a bit more and like I but I don't I, I don't have anything against Peter K right Mrs Beard loves him right but I don't, I don't find apart from like some of the stuff from Phoenix Nights which is different because it's written for yeah. you know, TV which he didn't write them oh he didn't I didn't know that but anyway like Mrs Beard loves him right but I'll be watching him and I'll be the, you know the garlic bread bit I've said this before oh, the cheesecake yeah. bit and she'll be like fucking rolling around whipping her dildos out and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like it's not I don't say it's not funny I'll be, I'll be like what's funny about that that'd be funny if garlic bread was exotic but everyone from the age of two onwards knows what garlic bread is so I'm, I just I don't find him he's, I'm sure he's a nice geezer yeah, right well, but no I put all the paddling because I mean he wrote part of that but him and Neil Fitzmorrison and a few other people and Dave Spike he wrote that but he, he's because he calls it Peter Kay's apparently he's a bit of a megalomaniac but a lot of like his famous stand-ups uh, jokes that were taken from other people like John Thompson from the fast show and stuff there was a lot of his bits in there apparently that bit where he's sliding on his knees oh right that wasn't his oh yeah um, but apparently he used to be like a real prick like so he was very good obviously he's a very very good showman so he'd, he'd host like I, I do a lot of the time if I'm in clubs and he'd go on and he'd be smashing it, he'd do horrible things like go, like he'd be smashing it. Like if your job as a host is to set the room up for the act, 
So you, 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 you'll do well sometimes, but then you go, oh, this guy's like really good mate of mine. You're going to love him. And you kind of try and carry that energy through and give them the best chance of a good start. But he'd be like, he'd be like, right, I know I've got to go now. I've got to bring an act on, but don't worry. I'll be back soon. <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> and then he'd wrap, oh, no. he'd wrap the mic, round, like the lead round the stand. So you'd get on and go, oh, and, and be like trying to yeah, unravel. Fumbling. And just look shit. Do you know what I mean? Because he just wanted to be the best. And again, this is just what I hear on the circuit. That's, it might that's, not that's be That's all true. conjecture, yeah. Conjecture is a key word there. Uh, but George, time, time stop that in case we need to cut it out because, uh, I don't know, 90% of England seems to think he's a national treasure, so we, yeah. we, we might get people <laughs> I on some. I don't want to start I might end up having to fight piece of K as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was one last Go thing on, I was going to uh, ask real quick. You're, uh, of course you're a scouser. Um, are you Liverpool or Evan? Or do you not care? I don't care. Oh, I, God. Well, that's probably a good thing, actually, because what I was going to ask is, I, I, over the last few days, I've never had so much... Well, I've, I've had this much hate before, but I, in my last video, I made a bit of a uh, morose observation. I said, uh, I was eating a, a pizza calzone. I said, this is saltier than Jurgen Klopp, right? Who was the current yeah. coach of Liverpool, right? And the amount of people that couldn't take that as a joke, you know, fully grown adults, <laughs> that are now like, I'm unsubbing because you made that joke about Liverpool. We've had enough said about our city. I'm like, well, no, I made a joke about... Jurgen Klopp being a bit of a sore loser. <laughs> and it was, of course, a joke. And you are, how old are you? I'm, 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 this before I came on the podcast. I didn't feel I'm going to there. Guilty by association. But I, I just thought, like, uh, either you'd not heard that or you just didn't care about football. I don't, so. I, I don't care. I mean, technically, I'm a Liverpool fan, but yeah, I don't. I, I can't, I've tried to like football so many times. I just can't. Can't you like Josh? I see exactly. why you guys get along really yeah. well. Yeah. I don't watch. I can. I, I want to watch fighting. That's yeah, it. <laughs> he still thinks like Fabian Bartes is playing. You know what I, I mean? Yeah. Rude Van Nistel retired right. twenty years don't, ago. Don't know who they are. Oh, there you go. All <laughs> right, we, we. I've got. We're, we're going to close this. Close the show with them. Um, we like to do a little section. Well, at least I like to do a little <laughs> I know section. What's coming. I, know what's coming. <laughs> this, I found this this uh, this Twitter account called Fesshole. And it's confessions on the internet. Yeah. In fact, Adam Rose, uh, well, I, uh, no, Adam Rose might yeah. have appeared on it uh, yeah. like recently. Yeah. But I like, what we like to do is like to read them out and just sort of comment on, on what we found on the internet in the week. Uh, so George, could you, uh, could you call us out some festivals? <laughs> could, could it be ones without like dick or badge <laughs> or like anything like that in there or <laughs> semen or something, just something without those things, please. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> scroll, 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 scroll. Yeah, I'll have to scratch that one. Um, as a 17-year-old lad, my family and I went to visit my terminally ill Nan for the last time. Nan was lying in the hospital bed as I bent down to kiss her goodbye. I also tried to give her a cuddle at the same time, but ended up accidentally gently cupping her right tit. <laughs> <laughs> Right, that's okay. I'm, I'm on board now. I'm, 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 not with terminal illness, but I believe I believe that happened. The tits involved. All right. I remember when my grandma last went into hospital, like, she, you know, they put them in those gowns and whatnot. And she was like, oh, Adam, help me up off the bed. She just went, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't eat for four days. <laughs> anyway, what's the next one, George? Okay. Uh, I got off a bus after a night out and desperately needed a shit. I shat in an alleyway and went straight in the shower when I got home. The wife thinks I showered because I cheated better than her knowing the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I just, okay. I'd just literally tell me missus. I would, I'd walk in before I had the shower go, I'm, I've just had to shit in an alley. <laughs> yeah, sure. My missus would find that very amusing. <laughs> Do you know how many times Mrs. Beard's seen my shitty underwear after it's gone a bit wrong? <laughs> she wouldn't care. The first, the first episode that we ever did, we titled it The Time Beard Shit His Pants and we dedicated the, like episode one of this podcast to him shitting his pants. So. In, in its entirety, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I shit. Um, I shit my pants last year. Rudy in the film, innit? <laughs> You've got a racket well, job, we, you, Rudy. We got invited to Tom Hawk Steakhouse in Potto, and this has been like light work for you. But I did the I did the thirty two ounce like Tom Hawk steak. Yeah, yeah. And I got the, uh, all the sides, and I was like, oh, et it all, and I was like, fine. And then I didn't eat for the rest of the day. I was just, I could feel it, and then I got up the next day. We went for a full English breakfast. And I had a full English. Walked to the, walking back to the van about to drive to Edinburgh from Middlesbrough, and I just went, "I've shit my pants. <laughs> I've shit my pants." And he was he had a camera instead of helping me, camera in my face, going, "Helping you? Ah, what have you done? What have you done?" And I was like, I "Fucking shit my pants." My missus is crying her eyes out, laughing at me, and I was like, "Waddle back <laughs> over to the cafe." What, what would you have done to help him? Like in truth, <laughs> instead know, of helping me. I know, but like, this, this is not, you don't need the camera in your face at that point, do you? <laughs> I mean, it was it made it made good content. 
<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Have we got any more, George? There's one left, one left. So during lockdown, I got a bug which resulted in ridiculously huge, violent, explosive diarrhea. I took a picture to send to the doctor in case it was anything serious. This was all fine until it came up on the Google digital photo frame during dinner with the in-laws <laughs> saying, remember this day. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I can see that happening. I've got a couple of pictures of shit on my phone though. You've got to take one from time to time. Have you sent, you've sent us pictures of your shit? Have you sent us a picture of your shit? Have we still got it? Oh, <laughs> <don't know. laughs> I I that know. one where you, where you did an explosive shit oh, and it yeah. project, it project. <laughs> <laughs> You have to know the story. Ah, the tell the story, please. <laughs> All right, real quick. So I had um, I had done this contest, right? It was out in America, right? Where, you know, you're eating a load, right? And uh, I, I, I was filming again the next day just because back then I had to make the most of my trip, right? <laughs> So I thought, right, I'm going to drink lo- loads of water, right, to try and get all the food yeah. through, right? So I drank what, God knows how much water. And I'm like, oh, I need, I need to poop. I need to poop. And then, like, I went to the toilet. But because I, I, don't, I think at the time, I don't know if I'd eaten early in the day or something, but I felt, like, a bit unwell. And I went to kind of, like, I, 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 as I was, I, went, I, went, I basically <laughs> went to Gip, right, because I drank a lot of water. And I just went, <laughs> <laughs> the bathroom mirror was behind me, and it shot out a fist-sized chunk of shit that just <laughs> I stuck to the mirror and started slowly slipping down the mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, <laughs> but he said it's the feature in the group chat. <laughs> They didn't believe me. Mike was like, I don't believe that mechanic. I'm like, well, Mike, I've, I've, I've got a picture of it if you want to see it. Uh, <laughs> Belter. Like that. Right, that's that, mate. We've done it. Thanks, mate. Thank you so much for coming oh, man, on. I pleasure. proper Thank appreciate it. Um, I'd say go buy some tickets for Paul's show, but you're already sold out and we've only got about four people listening to podcasts. So <laughs> we're doing all right. Yeah, just go go watch some of his videos on whatever, TikTok yeah. or you go wherever they're uh, around and uh, yeah, give him a follow on social media. That always adds to the, uh, the power. Thanks for coming on, Paul. Appreciate it, man. It's really nice to meet you. Catch you on the next one. Yes. Peace. <laughs>